Hello, adventurer. It's good to see you. You have made it to the morning grind. Welcome, welcome. It's the live stream at the beginning of the Geekverse, where we talk about all types of topics in geekdom, gaming, and fantasy, with an emphasis on being constructive and creating the things that we want to exist in the world. It's on the grind, size more. Can't be too fine, can't be too coarse. That's exactly right. There are a lot of adventures to be had today. Dungeons to explore and monsters to slay. And who knows what a random encounter might send our way. That's why we have to prepare. So settle in now for the morning grind with your favorite beverage in hand. Tea? Well, maybe something a little stronger. I've got a few bottles of the old Winyard left. Whatever you want. Pull up a chair. Oh, dude. Oh. If you're feeling fancy, how about a cappuccino? Or a frappuccino? Or how about an espresso? Just tea, thank you. Sounds good to me, Gandalf. Whatever you want. I'm just glad you're here. Everyone is welcome. You can just watch if you want. You don't have to worship anything you don't want to worship. Thank you, Mike. But be forewarned. Sometimes we get really strange characters around here. Wait, what's that you say? Why can't you come and be a part of the stream? My wife would disown me. Oh, no, I bet she'll be fine with it. Come on in. Am I scared for my safety? No. What are we supposed to do? Everybody do the secret handshake. <laughs> secret cultist handshake. Oh, oh, now do wizards who love each other. <laughs> yeah. This, my friend, is a science. I still don't have gifts, but it's fine. It's on the grind, son. Can't be too fine, can't be too coarse. Dude, this would be a sick place to bring the band. Indeed it would be, Dave. It really would. I'm seeing more people coming in. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Oh, look, here's someone new. <clears throat> is this the cultist meetup? Yes. Yes, it is. Come to hang out. Uh, hmm. Please accept me. I have nothing else. Okay, we accept you. Everyone's welcome here. Brought some snacks. Well, that makes things even better. You want some coffee? I don't drink coffee. You sure? It's cultist coffee. What well, makes it cultist coffee? I'm a cultist and I'm drinking it. Oh, then I'll have some. What exactly is going on here? I'm seeing more people coming in. Welcome, welcome. It's so great to have you. Oh, and look, here comes another stranger. you? Uh, yes, uh, fellow cultists. I could really use some food. Oh yeah? Uh, welcome. We have donuts. Oh, it's me. I'm glad I'm here. I'm sure you have a few questions for me, though. What's your name? Who do you work for? What god do you worship? Great questions, Rob. I'm Steve King, and I worship... Nyarlathotep. No, not really. I'm just Heath, and I won't be worshiping anything this morning. But I will be your host, Welcome to the office. We're going to have a great time. I've got my coffee ready because now it's time for the morning grind. If you could become a fish, that would be amazing. Then I could command you with my mental fish powers. Here I am. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you. Welcome to my home. Welcome to the office. Welcome to the morning grind. It is great to be here with you again this morning. Happy Sunday. Hopefully everybody is having a great weekend. I was at the winery yesterday for uh, a long time. I stayed and uh, did some work after <laughs> after I, I got off work yesterday and watched the sunset, and that was fantastic. So got back home late. But going to be working today and tomorrow, all today and tomorrow. I'm looking forward to getting a whole lot done here at the house, although there is grass to be cut as well. So I hope your life is going very well. Let's see. Who have we got here? Zero the Blade is here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Zero the Blade's already talking about the designing the cultist RPG. So that's our main topic for today. I'm going to talk to you about that, more about that in just a moment. But uh, we've gone, we've decided, and we being mainly me and also Brianna, that we need to go ahead and... Uh, at, with this relaunch, the cultists, we need to go ahead and get the RPG out that has been work, we've been working on, as well as some of the other items that we have that some people might not have ever been able to get. So we're going to be talking about uh, and doing some design work on the cultist comedy RPG, which, by the way, we are dual streaming uh, uh, this morning. I went ahead and did a dual stream 
not only to the Heath's Geekverse channel, but also streaming to the Cultists channel. So if you are watching over on the Cultist channel, welcome, good morning to you. It is great to have you. This live stream is generally done over on the Heath's Geekverse channel. And so if you are, in fact, I should probably drop a link in the chat to that. So if you are uh, over on the Cultists and don't regularly join us in the morning grind or didn't know about the morning grind, here, let's see. Uh, let me get you a link to the Heath's Geekverse channel. This is going to make a note. No, that's not. All right. So right here, Heath's Geekverse. We'd be delighted to have you for more. And if you're watching on the Cultist YouTube channel and you don't recognize me, well, I am the creator, producer, and co-writer of the Cultists. So let's see who else we've got here. James is here. Good morning, James. Good morning. Lynn, good morning. Mr. White, good morning, Mr. White. I don't know if I've seen you in the comments before, so great to have you. Welcome. Hey, welcome, Mike and Tomocrat. Good morning, good morning. Sable Phoenix is here as well. We've got all the crew here. BGD, oh, look. Yep, another stream. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so a couple things to talk about today. Okay, apparently we are having problems in the Discord server. I guess I should post a link to the Discord server, especially if you are here on the cultist channel you might not know about the raven keep discord server so i will put an invite link out for the discord server uh raven keep discord but apparently we are just under attack by porn bots so on my list of things to do this afternoon is to kite i saw a discussion was being had about that by the moderators uh in the discord server this morning hey nathaniel good morning good morning but I saw uh, some uh, discussion was being had about that, so I will catch up on that as soon as the stream is over. So I guess I'm going to contact Discord or something like that. Maybe there's some kind of setting or something that I don't have right. We we had a major porn attack like a couple of years ago, but that was just a one-off kind of thing, and I guess things like that happen. But now that has happened like three times or something in the last few days on the Discord server, so uh, we've cleaned it up, but apparently there, mu there must be something that's has to be set some different way or something like that. So I'll read through all the discord, the moderators uh, conversation. Some people may be much more familiar with like the discord settings and things like that than I am. I can generally hunt them down, but it takes me a while. So maybe there's something I need to do, or maybe I can uh, get in contact with discord or something and they can give me a hand. So I will take care of that. We'll, we will get into that um, this afternoon and tomorrow. Uh, let's see. So, Yep, so dual streaming to the Cultist channel. Just checking my notes here. So over on the Cultist channel, we have been moving through. Here we go. So, oh, look, there we are, live streaming on the Cultist channel. By the way, this cover right here that you see for the Cultist's uh, RPG, that was done by Adam Botsford, the same guy who illustrated Goodnight Sword. So he returned to create the cover for the Cultist's um the cultist RPG, and I really like it. I think it's got like the perfect, the perfect look for this type of theme. Brianna was laying out the cover itself, like with all, but uh, but Brian, but uh, Brian, but hmm, Adam Botsford did the art for it. So we have been rolling out the cultists uh, for its relaunch, its season one relaunch on its own dedicated channel, and we've been having a video go out basically every day. We are now up to this is uh, episode seven, I believe of the cultists the some the first attempt at summoning cthulhu right here so yes uh, episode seven of season one and then also got commentary behind the scenes commentary from the director right there i was only able to do commentary for the first five i kind of want to go back and do some more commentary but uh the uh the director brianna de silva has done commentary for each one of the episodes behind the scenes for a behind the scenes look so those are coming out as well so i'm sure another one's going to come out this afternoon Um, so we are rolling along with that. And so that's why, well, we're doing the cultist RPG to relaunch with this and right. No, you can't summon Cthulhu with sour cream and onion. Hey, good morning. Dungeon master as well. Yeah. Then uh, the shirts are going to be re-releasing. The shirts are re-releasing. They're just too good not to. They're too good not to. Um, so let's see what else is, what else do I have over here? Uh, do I have a table talk scheduled for this afternoon? I'm not even sure. Uh, I'm going to have to look on that as well. I might not have scheduled a table talk for release this afternoon. But also, if you are new here, 
please check out the Table Talk channel. That is our discussion channel. Table Talk. On two, we are rapidly approaching the 100th episode of Table Talk, and that's a major milestone. I'm trying to decide what to do about uh, for that. Do about that. Do for that. We might be looking. Um, I feel like we just did a rolling panel show because we just celebrated the launch of the Her uh, the Heroines Labyrinth. But I feel like we ought to do something for 100 episodes of Table Talk. So I think that this this Tuesday coming up could be something like. Uh, episode 97 or something, I will check. But we are definitely closing in on 100 episodes, and we'll think of some way to celebrate that in some way. Uh, then we may end up taking a little bit of a hiatus on Table Talk, because I think we're at our best when we are, um, when we really do the in-depth uh, intellectual kinds of conversations. And I was writing an email up to Doug and to Brianna and to Sherry Lee as well uh, about... Uh, perhaps like, you know, just for like, just for like a, you know, maybe three or four weeks or something like that. And also put out to all of you guys, what it is that we're going to be talking about on table talk. And that way that gives everybody a month to one kind of take a little bit of a breather, but then also use that time to catch up and go forward and study some of the materials that we want to, uh, going forward. Uh, Brianna's book, the city of reckoning is on the short list. So that one needs to be done. She's got a lot of stuff coming up to advertise her next book in June. And so we are going to, I, I think it would be nice to be able to have the discussion about her book around the time that she's starting to promote, uh, starting her promotion in June. So The City of Reckoning, I've got it. So that's, that's a long book. We've got to read that. Uh, everybody on the show does. And if you'd like to be part of that conversation, having read it, The City of Reckoning is coming up. Uh, also, other things that are on the list. I do want to do an in-depth analysis of Tolkien. So The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, The Return of the King. Um, I would like to do those in the next wave. So if we go on a little bit of a break and then come back for season two, basically, of Table Talk. Um, the Hobbit the, the, and Lord of the Rings would be on the list. Paradise Lost, we have been studying. I, I've been through, I've listened to the Paradise Lost audiobook a couple of times now. But I'm going to go through it again, actually, with the book in front of me and taking notes because I've got a lot here. So Paradise Lost is on that list, just to give everybody kind of a heads up here. Tuesday will be Aliens. I got to, to rewatch Aliens myself. Uh, but Tuesday is going to be Aliens. Doug will be on the show as well as Retro Nerd Girls. We'll be talking about Aliens. So if you need to brush up on Aliens this weekend, uh, that would be a, this would be a good time to do it. Uh and then because once we launch the cultists uh, RPG, I would like to have some tabletop uh, table talk uh, episodes focused on the cultists. Doug said that if he thought that it would be a good idea to interview me, he said, why don't we interview you, Heath? I think he brought that up. He might have brought that up on live stream uh, a couple of weeks ago or something like that. And I think that's a good idea. So uh, when the cultist RPG launches, which I don't have a date yet, but it, I want it to be pretty soon. I think having a uh, Doug inter Doug can host the show and interview me <laughs> for one, but then also we'll do a season one discussion of the cultists. Doug has only seen episode one, so we got to get all ten episodes of season one back up on the new channel, and then uh, season one, if you watch it all the way through, is only about an hour, and so we'll watch season one, and then uh, Doug will have a discussion. We'll have Brianna on the show too because she's the director and the co-writer. And I'd like to have some other people uh, on there as well, like Glenn Payne, who plays um, Ben. He does a lot of independent film as well, and I'm wondering if he's got a project to uh, come out with, and we could talk about that as well. Uh, Sable says, rewatching Aliens is never a bad thing. It has been a long time since I watched Alien, and so I it was kind of like watching it new when Doug and I talked about it, and it's been equally as long since I've watched Aliens. Dungeon Master says, I'd love to hear your convo on the Wheel of Time series, but that would take three years to go through. Uh, yeah, now, and I'm not even all that familiar with it. I, I A long time ago, I went through the audiobook of the first book because I wanted to know what it was about. And I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it. But I didn't get into the TV show at all, which I hear was bad. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't know if Brianna or Doug have done Wheel of Time. But anyway, that's a little bit of a heads up. Oh, we're going to be doing some biblical uh, uh, stories to Genesis. We, we started to do Genesis a few weeks ago, 
but we weren't ready for it. We weren't ready for it. So it, hiatus would be a good time to study the stories of Genesis. Uh, and really one of the only topical ones that I have planned is we do have the House of the Dragon coming out uh, later this year. And I did really love the House of the Dragon TV show. So we may cover some of the House of the Dragon and study that. Uh, and like we should probably do like a season one re recap and review because we weren't live streaming. I wasn't live streaming when uh, season one came out. So we might do a, a like an analysis of the House of the Dragon and then do a couple of episodes on the House of the Dragon as the episodes are being released. We will see. Uh, so that's just some heads up there about what's coming up. Uh, let's see. So what is this? Okay, so this right here. So I put this up and I a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago and I showed it off, but I wasn't quite ready to launch yet. But it, And I changed up a few things here. So in order to relaunch the cultists here, we're doing a $500 dice giveaway. So uh, this is actually the first time, basically, I've talked about it in that context. So dice giveaway. I have got a bunch of elder dice over here that I don't, um, that I need to find a home for. I've got, I've got, uh, you know, the complete set of everything that was produced and everything like that up here on the shelf back here. But I thought that to do something, we should do something because the the cultists are being relaunched. And so I thought doing a really nice giveaway of all of these Elder Dice would be nice. So if you are interested in the Dice giveaway and then in the RPG, please sign up there. And that also, by the way, that when you sign up there, you'll get the option to subscribe to the different YouTube channels and things like this. So if you're new here and you're looking for different links, if you sign up here, it'll give you an opportunity to uh, sign, up for the, sign up for the different YouTube channels. So we've got... Um, I've got $500 worth of dice. The grand prize is $300 worth of dice. And then there are some other prizes as well. That's a better uh, picture of what the cover of the cultist RPG is going to look like. Don't you really like that? Like I said, that was done by Adam Botsford. And uh, I really like it. I think he nailed it. I mean, Brianna kind of art directed him on this. Brianna, I basically left it to Brianna and uh, Adam. And so Brianna art directed it. Uh and, and uh, Adam Botsford put it together. So I'm excited about this. And I at the same time we bring out the RPG, I think the thing to do is to re-release the shirts. Uh, now, the problem, if you remember, uh, I've, or might have heard me speak about this before, when I tried to launch this for the first time a few years ago, I had like every single problem that you could possibly have trying to launch the, the product line for the cultists. And really, really that really fouled everything up for uh, a while. <laughs> but one of them, but some of these are the shirts. And actually, I had a terrible printer. I didn't know it. I I mean, the, they produced the samples perfectly and everything looked good. But then when they went to actually produce the shirts, they uh, they misprinted them. That's not going to happen this time. I've got a, a much better printer this time. I mean, I think that printer is fine. I think it was really a one-off thing that <laughs> it was completely screwed up with the shirts that I ordered. But nonetheless, I'm going with a different printer this time. Because I think these shirts really need to see the light of day. A lot of these were designed uh, by Brianna De Silva. Now, not the, the Cultist Coffee and the Witch's Brew were not, but I love this logo, the Cultist Coffee logo. So I, we just need to bring back the shirts because more people need the Cultist Coffee shirts. Obviously, poo, a spoof of the Starbucks logo. So the Cultist Coffee shirts and then also the Witch's Brew. So two different shirts, they're more, but two different coffee themed shirts. The Witch's Brew and the Cultist Coffee. And I mean, we got to have those. We got to have those. <laughs> uh, James says, had to step away for a moment. Did you mention anything about next month's RavenCon? I think I can swing another Saturday off, especially for planning to do an alien RPG. I have not. That's next up. I was going to talk about that next. Uh, fans of the cover? Yes. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh Right. The commenter says, I'm excited about the RPG and the Cultist Coffee logo is such a clever graphic design. Thank you. Thank you. My aunt designed this guy right here in the hood. And then I see this is the Cultist, uh, the, the 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 font that we're using for the Cultist. So Brianna may, I don't know, Brianna may have actually put the logo together or I may have, I don't know. But my aunt actually designed this guy and designed uh, designed the witch right here. So I really like that. So that's that is uh, she that that's Carol Stewart, who you actually see her credited in the cultist as well. Uh, she was the photographer for season one, and then for season two, she was our production manager. So those were designed by uh, somebody who was involved in the cultists as well. 
Uh, all right, welcome, Michael. Uh, Micah, good to see you. So, and then also these are these are the shirts that Brianna designed. So we've got three. We've got I don't know if you can see them uh, that well right here. I think you can. So uh, this one right here is all hail the black go to the woods with a thousand young. This black shirt right here is thank you, Mama Shub, which comes from episode five. And then this one over here is the classic, you can't summon Cthulhu uh, with sour cream and onion, which is such a classic, which is such a classic. Uh, you do have to kind of know what, I mean, what the, you know, that's such a cultist reference. That's from season, that's from episode 10. Yeah, episode 10 of season one. Classic. But if you know Cthulhu, or if other people know Cthulhu, you're going to get looks and you're going to get, you're going to be asked about that shirt. So it's, it's definitely time to bring those shirts back. So I'm working. What I've done is I put together, I'm starting to put together the Kickstarter page for this. Brianna and I were working on that last Wednesday. I worked on it a little bit more. Uh, we're going to be working on graphics again together next Wednesday. So the plan is to bring the cultist RPG to Kickstarter. And it will also have some of these, uh, different different shirts and different items on it as well. I'm still planning exactly what different kinds of items I want to have on there. Basically, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this without doing any overseas manufacturing. Uh, for this campaign, I don't want to do any overseas manufacturing. So nothing's going to be coming from overseas. I want to do this kind of not exactly in house because <laughs> it's not in house, but relatively locally as far as the manufacturing goes. And then probably I will also end up conducting the shipping operation myself. I might not even go to a warehouse for this. Uh, we will see. So I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this contained uh, and then, you know, launch it and do it well. So that's basically what's going on. Uh, the prizes here. So I've got oh, so second prize. I've got three different brand of Cthulhu Elder Dice sets with magnetic grimoire box right here. I've got three of those to give away. And then this one right here, the first prize, that's three Elder Dice sets, the Doom Edition brand of Cthulhu, which you can't just get. The Doom Editions, you can't just get. Those were Kickstarter exclusive, but I have one to give away. Uh, so Doom Edition, Brand of Cthulhu set, Elder Sign, Mark of the Necronomicon, plus Passage of the Traveler slipcase and a premium snapping dice, dice tray for that right there. And then the grand prize is nine Elder Dice sets, the Doom Edition Brand of Cthulhu, the Brand of Cthulhu, the Mythic Elder Sign set, the Mark of the Necronomicon, the Mythic Crest of Dagon, Mythic Seer's Eye, Yellow Sign, Mark of the Necronomicon in Bone White on Blood and Magic, the Astral Elder Sign, Lay Silver on Blue, uh, Blue Eldritch, Plus the Colors Out of Space Doom Edition Library Slipcase. That's another Kickstarter exclusive. A Doom Edition a Library Slipcase for all nine of those and a premium snapping rolling dice tray. So if you want, uh, that is the place to sign up and you will know, uh, we'll draw here on the morning grind. A dice sign up, I'll put the link here again. Uh, well, we will we will draw when, we'll, we'll make it the morning grind, but we'll draw for this for those winners the day the Kickstarter goes live. I've still got to make up some marketing uh, stuff for marketing materials to let people know this is going on. So we got to get this out there. So um, that's what's going on. So that's what's going on there. Let's see. Thank you, Mama Shub has mass market appeal. As long as the word gets out, these will be very successful, right? We got to get the word out. Even those the the star the spoof of the Starbucks logo. I mean, people need to see those. Ah, oh, let's see here. Uh, and then, okay, so then the next thing, I guess this is our final announcement before we get started in. We're only doing uh, the morning grind once a week right now, so there's a lot that stacks up going on in the week. There's a lot going on. Is RavenCon. So we will do this one again the first week of next, the uh, first weekend, first Saturday of next month. That's in May. If you are not familiar with RavenCon, this is when we I'll put the RavenCon sign up. This is when we get together uh, in our virtual online coffee shop and play games. So play tabletop games. And yes, I'm going to build out the Cultist RPG for the uh, for RavenCon. So we're going to do that. I have got to contact, start contacting people. There's a lot to do, so I'm glad I'm off work today and uh, tomorrow. Uh, to start organizing not only the the Kickstarter but also the next Ravencon because yes I would like to play Aliens I got to ask Doug about that 
Uh, Doug wanted to play that. I've got to reach out to Doug. I got to reach out to Retro Nerd Girl anyway because Retro. I got to reach out to ne Retro Nerd Girl because she wanted to be in on our aliens discussion. So uh, I got to contact her about Tuesday, and then let her know that uh, she is invited. Retro Nerd Girl is invited to the next RavenCon, as well as uh, Doug. So yes, it's time. Uh. Oh, hey, RPG Exile. Uh, let's see. Raven. If you haven't, Raven like, here, I'll take that down. If you haven't seen, if, you, if you're if you new here, like, you can see kind of running in here, that's the virtual coffee shop that you're inside. And then when you sit down at one of the tables, it connects you to a virtual tabletop where you can play games with people. So I think it's a really neat, I think it's really neat. We've had success with all of the the software and things like that. We've done it a couple of times. So... Uh, now it's time to grow that as well. So I would love to have everybody there for some gaming. Lots to think about, and I have no time. All right. Uh, well, if you would really feel bad, you'll be live on the show and I could redraw. <laughs> yeah, RPGX, I would love to have you. So that's the link for the RavenCon. I'll put the link back down here. So we have a lot of fun, uh, and we need to start some kind of West Marches campaign in there. I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about that. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Hero Quest lately, but I've got several games built out in there. You, oh, you can see what games I've got built out right here. If you scroll down, we've been playing a lot of Hero Quest. We've got Shadow Dark built out. We were playing Shadow Dark a, a couple of Raven Cons ago. We've got One Night Werewolf built out. Uh, that's fun. I want to play some Secret Hitler. I'd like to play, uh, run One Night Werewolf too. Uh, Wizard's Quest, that's like a fantasy version of Risk. I want to play that one. Dragon Strike, we played this one uh, as a test inside the coffee shop as well. So Dragon Strike is kind of like TSR's answer to Hero Quest, um, but also like pre-D&D in form. So that's what's going on. There's a lot. <laughs> you can't say there's not a lot going on over here. So that's what's happening. Let me check my notes. I think that was all basically the the goings on that I have. Yep, I think it is. Okay, so we can get to the design of this. We're gonna have to read this. I meant to do a, a complete read through of this because I I've only typed it up and I haven't read read through it. So I guess we can start doing some of that uh, this RPG right here today. But I can show you what's in it. I, I was thinking it needs to be some of the R uh, BGD says I'm down for a West Marches RPG campaign. And I know that the uh, BGD is, has run those kinds of campaigns in for uh, what in the Runehammer discord and things like that. So that's fantastic. You might be someone to talk to about that. <laughs> I was thinking about, um, well, I was thinking about a particular, particular kind of campaign that could be like that, that I could run um, that would be particularly well suited to that style but I haven't had a lot of time to think on it. Uh, all right, let's breathe and sip. We can't forget that. Sometimes I do. And then we'll come over here to uh, see what I've got here with this uh, RPG and get your commentary and we'll try to make characters and things like that too. My, I'm having a contact issue, so hopefully I'm going to be able to read this. <laughs> all right, but let's breathe and sip. Everybody got your favorite beverage this morning? This is the mental health portion of the show if you're just joining us. If you're joining us for the first time, perhaps on the Cultist channel, because I'm dual streaming, because we're this, we're working on the Cultist RPG. So here we've got our favorite beverage this morning. Everybody have it close at hand. We're going to do a deep, two deep breaths, and then complete inhales, deep inhales, complete exhales. I always say that wrong. Deep inhales, complete exhales, and then we'll take a sip of our favorite beverage. So here we go. Let's breathe. And sip. Ah, that's very good. That's very good. Did you know, I just saw, I believe yesterday, I saw some kind of headline go by that coffee consumption is like at some kind of all-time high right now, like daily coffee consumption or, or at-home coffee consumption or something like that. Did anybody else see that? 
So I saw that it was at an all-time high, and I was just wondering, can that be a coincidence? Is that a coincidence, or is that the influence of the morning grind? Could be, could be, could be we're driving up our coffee consumption here. Uh, Nathaniel says, you uh, uh, you start building out Axis and Allies or Third Reich, let me know, because I'm helping. Well, now that would be epic. Axis and Allies? Um I mean, there are other games I want to build out too. I mean, there are, and I've thought about it. I've got Axis and Allies sitting over here, and I've thought about Axis and Allies. That would be a big one to get into. I mean, that would be, a, that would take a lot to build out. Help might be necessary for that one. But uh, I'd like to build that. Zombie Side is one that I would still like to build out. Um, we, if we're going to play Aliens too, that's another thing. So I need to reach out to people about uh, the Aliens RPG. Because so if we're going to do Aliens, I got to take a look at what it's going to take to put Aliens on the tabletop. Uh, cause we're gonna need to do that. Cause it's got like custom dice and things like that. So we'll have to build out the custom dice. That's going to take time. Uh, but if Doug is in and, uh, uh, Sable Phoenix had, had potentially offered to run that. Um, but I'm going to have to build it out. I'm gonna have to build it out so we can play. Uh, Shogun and Fortress America. I've never gotten to play Shogun. I don't think I might have played it once or like played part of a game once. But yeah, I know. I've thought about that one too. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff. You, and any, you know, anybody can build out games like that because that's using the uh, tabletop.io tabletop, virtual tabletop, tabletop.io. So anyone can build out things in tabletop.io. Uh, if you've got something that you really want to play, you can build it out and sign up to uh, run games and, and offer to play, uh, offer to run games and things like that. Uh, so that's possible. I just haven't been haven't had time to, to build out more games. Okay, so here is what we got. I'm going to can I increase? Uh, I need to zoom in on this. If I can. Oh, down here. Okay. I don't want to change my... Okay, perfect. There, I think it's probably easier for you to read, too. Okay, so the goal of this game here, what we were trying to do, is we were trying to build a game, a role-playing game based on the cultists that's a lightweight comedy RPG. And actually, when I first started the Morning Grind, one of the earliest Morning Grinds, Trey brought to my attention the game Low Stakes by Craig Campbell. And we went over Low Stakes early in the morning grind. And then later, actually, we looked at it again uh, a couple of months ago or three months ago or something like that. Maybe it was a bit longer. Uh, specifically with an eye toward, is this something that we could adapt to the cultists? So I was uh, very impressed when I was reading the Low Stakes RPG, how well I thought it could potentially fit for the cultists. Because Craig... Uh, designed that game to be inspired, or as it uh, th that game that he designed was inspired by what we do in the shadows, which actually I had not seen when we did the cultists. I might not have watched that until after season two or something. But nonetheless, it's the same kind of style show, the same uh, style humor. And Craig came up with a way with the low stakes RPG to replicate that uh, that type of feel of a mockumentary comedy uh, mockumentary comedy style story. Um, in a role-playing game. And I thought, well, that's exactly what we're doing with the cultists. Could we adapt that to the cultists? And so I did ask him, and I'm going to contact him again, but I did reach out to him and I said, hey, listen, I've got this show called The Cultists that is a mockumentary uh, web series. Can I use the low stakes rules to make a, an adaption, a role-playing game for the cultists? And he said, yeah, you know, do whatever you want, go for it. So I said, okay, so I started using that. So I didn't create these rules. And basically what I was doing was uh, trying to go through the low stakes rules and then adapt them for the cultists. And also, if I could, try to improve the flow of the rules. So that's another thing I want to look at carefully as I'm going through here to make sure that the flow of the rules is right um, and that it actually makes sense and is put together in the best way as far as... Um, as far as rules format goes. So this is the back. This is what I put together for the back. Does this make sense? Whoop. 
does this make sense? So the back of the book will say, you can't summon Cthulhu with sour cream and onion. Classic line, like we were just talking about. Is your wand altar red hot brand of Cthulhu and greenstone idol ready? No? Well, do you at least have some dice? Yes? Okay, great. That'll be enough. The Cultist role-playing game is a GMless, rules-light tabletop RPG where you'll portray modern-day Lovecraftian cultists engaged in absurdist, mockumentary-style comedy antics. It seems like the whole world is down on you. It's not that you don't have big plans. You really do. Perhaps you'll learn as much forbidden knowledge as you can and give your brain to Yogg-Sothoth. Maybe you'll dig up your grandfather and try to reanimate him with some poetry from an old book. Or maybe just cut your heart out as a sacrifice to Cthulhu. Well, if your mom would let you have a real knife again. She doesn't understand. Her and all the rest of society. They're the problem. Nothing's wrong with you. You know that for sure. No matter what they think, you're carrying on. Yaba zavada. Yaba zavada. Cthulhu. Rillie. Wagle. Nagel. Fatagen. So the Cultist RPG is based on the Cultists, a comedy web show about modern day Lovecraftian cultists just trying to worship Cthulhu and other gods in a world full of people who don't understand. The Cultists is available on YouTube, playable in one to two hours. All right, so I've got the um, title page here and then uh, credits here that are being filled out. But okay, let's see. Digimon fans might like this because they can be Diversmon. I, I don't know this. Divermon's trying to call Dragonmon from the depths of the Dark Sea. I don't know anything about Digimon. All right, getting started. Welcome, fellow cultist. Come right in. You don't uh, have to worship anything you don't want to worship. You can just watch if you want. But it would be uh, a lot more fun if you get involved. Within this section, you will find a basic overview of the game and what we need to start playing. Uh, of That should be something like the Cultists RPG. This is the first time we see it. Make sense? All right. Introduction. The Cultist role-playing game. The Cultist is a rules-like comedy tabletop game where players portray modern-day Lovecraftian cultists just trying to worship Cthulhu and other gods in a world full of people who don't understand. In many role-playing games, grand adventure and life-altering quests are the norm. In this game, your characters have those aspirations, but let's face it, you're not very good at it. Spells go awry, rituals often end in disaster, and sometimes the greatest challenge is going to school, or even the horror, getting a job. You're destined for great things, greater things than school and work anyway. It just isn't easy being a cultist. Inspired by the web series The Cultist, this game invites you into the space between the mundane and the mystical. In The Cultist RPG, you'll live the misadventures of Mike, Rob, Ben, Dave, and the rest of the gang as they try to awaken eldritch horrors. So don your robe, ready your broom or trident, and step into the world of the hilariously occult. Game Overview. Players in the Cultist RPG portray cultists dedicated to one of the Lovecraftian gods, such as Cthulhu, Dagon, Yogg-Sothoth, Shub-Nagoroth, or Azeroth. Azathoth. <laughs> Azeroth. <laughs> Azathoth. The player's goal is to tell a story together full of absurd humor and supernatural mishaps, just like in episodes of the Cultist web series. To play the games, players will describe their characters' actions and speak their dialogue aloud. The core of the game is improvisation and cooperation, but you will still be rolling dice. Dice are used to determine whether the characters succeed or fail at certain tasks, especially when they are not so good at what they are trying to do. Players will also roll dice when they're trying to influence their fellow cultists to do something they might not otherwise want to do. This is called gaining clout. The result of dice will demonstrate will either demonstrate an amazing success the character has, propelling the narrative forward in a new way, or introduce an interesting new complication the characters must deal with as they try to achieve their usually unspeakably horrible goals. Just like in the Cultist web series, players can enact asides to a fictitious camera crew documenting their, ac their antics in scenes called confessionals. The confessionals allow players to gain bonuses for themselves or introduce new complications into the life of, other, uh, of another character, driving the situation forward. 
to even more comic absurdity. Hey, good morning, Robert. Good morning. Yes, okay, Lynn says, yes, when you say one to two hours, do you mean one session? One one session, right. Yeah, this is intended to be played as a, as a one session kind of game. So not necessarily a campaign or a campaign would string together different storylines. I guess if you're if you were coming back to play your characters again, you would end up with a new story. This game's kind of designed to finish uh, finish a story arc in one session. Oh, this should you think this should not be a comma? You should try to achieve their usually To achieve their goals is what I was going for. Would you think it would be better without that? They're usually unspeakably horrible goals. What do other people think? I took out the comma after uh, horrible too then. I don't know. It might need to be there. Might need, what's, the, what's the phrase here? In the, inserting this phrase here. To achieve their goals. They're usually unspeakably horrible goals. We'll see what people think. Uh, there's no set number of players for the cultist RPG. It can be played with only three or four players or several more to create an ensemble cast like in the show. A single session of the cultist RPG can run between one and two hours, depending on the number of players and how detailed the players choose to role play the scenes. Uh, is this where we should put in something about um, a single session of the cultist RPG? I mean, we could put in here, uh, which... Um, resolves one story arc. Like, like is an episode. That's probably getting too long, too long now. Uh, a single session of the episode, uh, a single session of the cultist RPG, why don't we just say, usually resolves a single story arc like an episode in a web series. A single such session, a single session can run between one and two hours, depending on the number of players and how detailed the players choose to ro role play the scenes. That way we know we're talking about one single session of the game, but if you want to, you can go and get more story arc. Oh, do so you think it should be a parentheses then? There. So you would do this. Usually unspeakably horrible. Characters must deal with... Uh, with as they try to achieve their usually unspeakable horrible uh, uh, horrible goals. I think that works. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, okay, I want to put in here, I'm going to have Brianna work on the, the character sheets. She's going to be doing the layout for the book. And so I'm going to put, one of the first things that we like to see when we've been going through role-playing games here is to put in a character sheet early on and then to have the character sheet described. I'm having a problem with this kind. Uh, and see the character sheet described. So when Brianna uh, comes up with the character sheet, I'm going to stick a character sheet in here and then have this be the part where uh, the character sheet is explained. We'll see if that helps at all. Uh, what you need to play. To play the Cultist RPG, you will need this book and a few six-sided dice. Each player will need a character sheet, either one with a pre-generated cultist or a blank one to create their own, and something to write with. Players will also need to, some way to keep track of clout and confidence during the game. These <coughs> can be marked on the character sheet, but using physical tokens that can be passed around is often easier and more fun. Uh, the group will also need a copy of one of the beat sheets found in the back of this book, so we're going to have to come up with those as well. Okay, this is not working. Uh, the beat sheet provides ideas and offers a suggested story structure for the game by providing a guideline for a particular type of story being told, like trying to steal spell components from the local butcher shop. However, more experienced groups might choose to play without a beat sheet, making up everything in a completely freeform way as they go. 
So characters and also the beat sheets, the custom beat sheets to talk about what what are cultist like games to be played. I think is going to be a lot of fun. All right, how to play. Now this is where I started to change things up from from low stakes and in our uh, organization here. So I'm we'll see if this makes sense. Oh, usually just around you want that uh No, the editing instincts is fine. That's why we're looking at this. That's fine. Uh So actually you're recommending They're usually you you would recommend that then. There are usually unspeakably horrible goals. Yeah, that works too. I like that. Okay, so how to play. The core of the cultist RPG is freeform role playing. Each player takes on the role of their character, decides on decides what the character will do and say as they deal with other players and their characters, non-player characters, and the situations they are involved in. This comedy will come from the character's uh, absurdity as inept Lovecraftian cultists trying to interact with the modern world. At its core, this game is a lot like an improv show. Uh, I do want to make a note, by the way, down here, that if we have the page space for it, I would like to put in uh, a section about playing the game with a GM. Because low stakes is set up to be GM less. But I think I would like to put in a section here about having uh, a moderator run the game. If you want to actually have a game master run the game and set it up, I think that we should provide some alternate rules for the GM. Because I know some people were talking about that and we were just talking about low stakes, that they didn't want to do um, just GM less. So I think we should come up with some alternate rules for that. As the players improvise at the table, they will develop their characters either on their own, either uh, develop their characters, either their own or another players by putting the spotlight spotlight for the scene on that character. On the character, on that character. Players will reveal things about their characters, develop relationships between them, and create personal tension between the characters. They will also move the story forward as they get closer to resolving the game's central conflict. Players should be mindful that the actions their characters take, their characters take, should be undertaken with the intention of resolving the game's underlying problem or underlying problem. Underlying problem. But players can and should also provide humor through their interactions. Players may reveal their character's shortcomings, describe failure comedically, and exchange in witty repartee with another. Basic rules of improv. The most foundational rule of improv is the players must accept what the other player, uh, what the other players will say, bring to the table and make part of the story. No player is permitted to negate or cancel something the other player has declared. For instance, if one player says their character walks into the scene with a dog, another player cannot decide it's not there, actually a cat, a leopard, or a baby eldritch horror. Often a player may ask another player questions as one character to another and even propose courses of actions or add relevant elements to character backstories, to the character backstories. To, we'll just say, two character backstories. When this happens, players should generally agree with what has been offered, state or otherwise stated, or otherwise created by other players, and then extend it by adding additional elements. This is often called the yes and rule in improv. Agree and extend what is being offered to develop the narrative. Occasionally, groups who have a high degree of trust with one another may decline or deny something offered by another player, but if that happens, they should follow the no but rule. This means that even though the suggestion by the other player has been denied, that player offers a new and viable alternative, the but, that keeps the focus the focus on the story and the narrative moving. <laughs> Lynn says, with a moderator, it becomes a lot like whose line is it anyway? Well, maybe, maybe. 
but I, I can see, I, I don't think you want to be too structured. I mean, you don't want to be too structured. I don't think, and turn it into kind of like a D and D game. Um, but I can see uh, having a moderator kind of set up a, set up the scenario. Uh, Cause this, we're talking about like, how long should it take to set up a Dungeons and Dragons game? How long should you, uh, uh, you know, take and prep for a three or four hour game? Like how long should game master prep be for a one to two hour game of the cultist RPG or, or low stakes? I don't think very long. I don't think very long. BGD says the humor of the cultist deals largely with public perception. Characters want not only to achieve their goals, but also to be taken seriously while they do mechanics in your game should model this. Oh, that's interesting. Characters not only want to achieve their goals, and where's the note, notepads right here? So I'll make note of that. Uh, yes, perception. Uh, Brianna and I were talking about when we were writing the writing the scripts that we've got uh, the different conflicts that create humor. One of them is the mundane world. So you've got the mundane world uh, and its perception. You've got the uh, you've got how seriously they take themselves and then you've got the reality of what it is that they do. Perception as important. And a desire to be taken seriously. Whose cult is it anyway? That's that's pretty funny, man. Robert says, "Roll uh, pre-interview players before uh, game to roll characters." Yeah, so we've got rules here for uh, pre-generating characters, or, or having the characters, or using pre-generated characters, and then also coming up with your own. When responding to other players in this way, it's not an opportunity for you to steal the spotlight of the scene or attempt to win. To the contrary, the game will be more enjoyable for everyone at the table if players are, and uh, if players are looking that I think that should just be are are looking for ways to enhance the story by putting the spotlight on other players and making them cooler and more interesting. If all the players do that for each other, the game will uh, be more fun and evocative for everyone. Okay, the story and the scenes. The structure of the story and the scenes. While some advanced groups might choose to improv the entire game, the Cultist RPG features a series of story outlines in the back of this book that provide some structure to the improvisational nature of the game. Each story outline gives you the basics of the situation the characters are in, as well as suggestions for scenes that will help propel the story forward and provide opportunities for conflict, complications, and comedy. Use the following steps to set up the scenes and tell the story. Set the stage. Select a story that everyone wants to play. Roll a die and refer to the setup list to determine the basic setup for the story. Now, let's see. Have we talked about... So we got creating a character. I went ahead and deliberately, based on our... Uh, the way that we like to read through RPGs and what we want, what we like to read, I went ahead and uh, put that how to play up here at the front and put, you know, designing a character later on. Although I think that we should add in here... Um, since we're talking about right here and how to play, I need to add a section or add, whoop, add a section here uh, on picking a pre-generated character. Or creating a custom one using the later rules. Pre-generated character. Okay. Because you need to tell everyone, hey, Doc Flamingo. Lynn says, as I read it, they are looking for respect and completely in denial about their own incompetences. Yes, denial about their own incompetences is definitely uh, part of this. Denial of their own incompetence. Denial or also uh, denial of incompetence. Or just completely blind 
could be denial or it could just be blind to their incompetence. I don't know primetime adventures. Uh, BGD says, in-game metacurrencies are the key to achieving this kind of mechanical modeling. On Discord, I pointed you to the old-school Ninja Burger RPG. I remember that. Ninja Burger. Which is great. It contains an umbrella honor system. Okay, I do need to look at that one before I continue here. Hey, Doc. Uh, Zero of the Blade says, a must-work-together RPG. Hope some players like that and aren't the crazy YOLO manic type that will derail the campaign. Yeah, and of course, I would also like to do this for dinner and a board game. We need to, we need to once we have everything we need, we need to set this up so we played in the RavenCon. But also, I think having some of the actors and actresses back and playing on uh, dinner and a board game would be fun. Mike says, isn't a theme in the show about people looking for agency in their life? Uh, well, I don't think we've ever discussed that specifically. But that doesn't mean it's not there. That could certainly be uh, that these these people are looking for some type of agency in their life. Uh, I, I've never really thought of it that way, which does not mean that it's wrong by any stretch. Uh I always, I mean, I, I always thought that it was about, uh, you know, people who really like something and are and, and are unabashedly and unabashedly embrace it. They don't care what other people think about them. This is a group of people, like many geeks, taken to an extreme. We like this thing, Cthulhu and the cults and things like that, and uh, we're we're unabashedly into it, and we don't care what other people think about ourselves. We don't care about what other people think. BGD says, instead of character classes, assuming you decide to create a class and level style of PC progression, you could differentiate each class by the eldritch god they choose to worship. Well, this doesn't have... Um, it's it's not level and class. No, this, it has, this has a very interesting... The low stakes system has a really interesting way of, of coming up with the character. It defines... We'll get into this. Your narrative role first. So what type of narrative role are you? Now, of course, in here, you want to know what cult you are and what god you worship. And that's, I think, obviously a core part of this. But like in low stakes, the narrative role of the person comes first. And then if they're a, a vampire or a werewolf or some other type of monster, that comes second. So I'm kind of doing the same thing with uh, the cultist RPG here. Uh Bacon says, have the actors play characters they weren't the cast in. They or that they weren't. Oh, you want to mix it up? Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Well, I'll just let them play which, whatever they wanted. That's that's interesting to have them mix it up. Lynn says, I think a search for agency is a subtext in the show, but it's not highlighted. Now we do have to look at this. We have to look at this uh, as we're going through here. Each Lovecraftian patron deity could grant PCs different abilities and a boon and place and place different in-game requirements on their conduct, which could support and flavor the RP mechanically. Yeah, actually, we'll probably have to do another show on this. Uh, but yes, and that's exactly what we got to think of because we need some kind of blurb on each one of the cults and then how that affects the game. So James also thinks that. That's very interesting. I love that. I love it when people come up with new things that... Uh, new things from things that uh, I created. So uh, James says, I agree with Mike M and Lynn. It may be accidental, but it's a, subtex a subtextual thread throughout the show. Well, we'll have to talk about that when we uh, do the talk on table talk about the cultists. That's fascinating. A board game version should include a sheet of Cthulhu blotter acid in a reorder form. <laughs> So setting the stage, select a story that everyone wants to play. So this would be after you get your character. Roll a die and refer to the setup list to determine the basic setup for the story. If the group would like to complicate the story, roll a die on the twist list. 
to add something that will flesh out the story and shake things up. Lead player and lead character. Select a lead player. That player's character will be the lead character for the scene. That character starts with clout. Now, this is what I was trying to um, uh, make sure that I had right, was how clout gets moved around. Because this says right here, select a lead player. This probably needs to be, we'll deal with the formatting later. Uh, the player's character will be the lead character for that scene. But this is the very beginning. That character will start with clout. But I don't think that means that every time the scene changes and you have a new lead character, that, that clout moves. I think at the very beginning, the player's character will be the lead character. For that character starts the game. I'm going to say the game with clout. The lead character is at the heart of the first scene. Most of the action in the scene should involve or revolve around them. When the scene is over, the lead player chooses who will be the lead player for the next scene. Uh, the chosen player's character becomes the lead character. The new lead character is the main character for the new scene, and so most of the action in the scene should involve or revolve around them. The previous lead player becomes the extra player, see below, for the next scene. The lead player lead character passes around the table in this way until everyone has had a turn. No player can be the lead character, can be the lead more than once before all the other players have had a turn. This completes the round. The last player in the round to be the lead player chooses who will be the lead at the start of the next round. The game does not end on the last lead player of any given round, nor does everyone need to get an equal number of turns as the lead player. See right here, the lead player, lead character passes around the table in this way until everyone has had a turn. But to me, that does not follow that clout also changes in the same way. This right up here, when you're selecting the lead character, they get clout. That starts the game with clout. Um, that player starts the game with clout. Um, I feel like I should I should call that out. Um, note that clout does not automatically. No, note that the uh, the lead lead character in a scene does not automatically. I think this is right. I want to check with Craig about this. Have clout after the first scene. Clout will uh, rotate among the players according to its own rules described later. Let me see what's going on in the comments here. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Don't forget to like the stream. And I don't know which, uh, like I said, we're dual streaming this episode between the Cultist channel and the Heath's Geekverse channel. So if you are watching on the Cultist channel, welcome and good morning. It's good to see you. Uh, but the Morning Grind ordinarily airs on the Heath Geek First channel. But since this one is cultist related, I thought that I would dual stream it over there. Uh, let's see. So establishing the extra player. A player whose character is not in the scene portrays any non-player characters, NPCs in the scene. That player is called the extra player because the NPCs are like extras in the web series. Each time a player is the extra player, his or her character gains one confidence point. If the extra player has just been the lead player in the previous scene, their character can appear in the next scene, but should only play a minor role as that character has just had the spotlight. Determine the scene. The lead player rolls two dice, adds them together, and refers to the scenes in the list in the story outline to determine what scene will be played. 
If a die roll is repeated during the game, use the next unrolled scene up or down according to the lead player's choice. Alternatively, the lead player may make up an entirely original scene. Playing scenes. Players role play. Players role play their characters describing what they will do and what they will say. Most of the scene is handled in a cooperative manner with players using their own judgment on whether or not their characters succeed or fail at different tasks. Each player may attempt uh, this, 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 pay, this section may need to go right here. Uh, Uh, because I, I'm going to describe, I'm going to describe checks here in a moment. And I think I need to move clout to where clout goes. This was part of the kind of like the organizational, uh, the organization, the low stakes RPG. And I was trying to kind of fix this. And as I got to this section and was writing about what uh, these checks are, I thought, well, maybe they actually need to go into the section. Because the next section is adjudicating actions. And this is about adjudicating actions. And I really don't like to read things twice if I can help it. So like the clout, I probably need to reference the clout section. Uh, but this information may be in the sections on checks and clouts anyway. And even this giving up clout voluntarily. A player with clout can voluntarily give it up, uh, give it up voluntarily. Can voluntarily give it up to another player to get that character to do what your character wants them to do. That character must acquiesce to your character's wishes, but get but gains clout in exchange. So that's one way that clout could pass from one character to another. And so if somebody gains clout, like at the end of a scene, I don't think it makes sense for the next lead player to automatically get it because they might not have been able to do anything with it yet. So I think clout should kind of stay with that character. Although I guess that does mean the character has to be in the next scene. So I'm thinking about moving this section right here to the adjudicating actions section. Wrapping up the story. Eventually, the game will come to a point where it feels like the overall story arc is close to being resolved and the story is coming to a close. At this time, the player with clout can declare they are attempting to bring the story to a close. If they do so, another player can attempt to take clout away from them before the scene ends. That player makes a clout skill check as normal, spending confidence if they have any. But player who, but the player who currently has clout, actually, kind of, I kind of think that this wrapping up the story should go after adjudicating actions. I'm going to do that. Wrapping up the story because that kind of makes sense. That like how to play that should be down here at the end. Sable says, I haven't actually played Primetime Adventures or Low Stakes RPG, to be honest. But from what I know, Primetime Adventures, uh, this definitely sounds simple. It sounds similar. It's very episodically focused. Let me write that over here because we got Ninja Burger and um, Primetime Adventures. I might look at both of those this afternoon. Oh, Mike says, uh, I own Primetime Adventure. I agree it could be used in this way. However, I think for simplicity of the game, this system might be better. But it could work. So let's skip wrapping up the story. We'll come back to that. So um, we could say, I think probably then best is to say playing scenes and then we'll say judgment whether or not their characters succeed or fail at other tasks. I'm just going to put notes in here, uh, but put a note, put a sentence in here about sometimes roles being called for which will lead into the next section on uh, actions. So I think that's going to be the better organization way. So then if I find out whether or not I need this uh, section here or if I need to move this information to the next section. So adjudicating actions. While most of the game can be handled with freeform improvisation, there are some circumstances where players will use simple rules to adjudicate whether or not important actions are successful. 
These rules also provide a structure to inject complications and humor into the game. To do this, the cultist RPG uses currencies, checks, complications, and confessionals. Currencies. The cultist RPG uses two meta currencies to manage the game, confidence and clout. Confidence represents a character's inner determination. Players can spend confidence points to improve the chance he or she is successful at different tasks. Player characters start the game with one confidence point and can earn more as the game progresses. There is no limit to the number uh, to the number you can accumulate, but players will probably want to spend them to confer advantages on their character in different circumstances. Players may find that it is easiest to use tokens, such as poker chips, to keep track of confidence points, but they can also be tracked on their character sheets. Okay, I said that in the beginning about what do you need. I don't think I specifically called out poker chips, but I did say that, uh, what do you need? What do you need uh, using physical tokens, such as poker chips? When a character has clout, so that's what confidence is. When a character has clout, it means that character has the upper hand among their fellow uh, cultists. I want to say cultists right here. Their fellow cultists. Perhaps they have impressed the other characters in some way or otherwise earned their respect. Uh, only one player can have clout at a time, and unlike with confidence, characters cannot store clout. A character either has it or they do not. If another player gains clout, then it's lost by the player who had it. An easily identifiable token or other object should be used to indicate what player's, char what player, what player's character has clout at the table. This allows every player to, I don't need to say at the table again, every player to easily identify which player has clout at any given time. However, if no such token or object is available, clout can be marked on the character sheet. So we're talking about primetime adventures here. There's also a system I'm thinking of where you get like fan mail and such because you're part of the actual cast and crew. Is that primetime adventures too? Huh. Okay, checks. Checks. Most of the time when a player describes the action his or her character takes, that action is automatically successful. Other players react to it and the story moves forward. However, there are two instances, I should say circumstances, where players roll dice <clears throat> called a check to determine if their character is success, if, if the character's if the character's action is a, is a success. If the character's action is a success, rather than deciding success or failure of the action themselves. A player must make a check whenever, one, their character attempts to gain clout with their fellow cultists by using one of their clout skills, or two, when they attempt to succeed at one task, when they succeed at a task in one of their problem areas, which is something they're not very good at. I don't think I need to say that. Succeed in one of their problem areas. Problem area is something you're not very good at. Players may only attempt one check per scene. Only one player can attempt a clout skill check in any single scene. To make a check, roll a single die. I guess I will say single six-sided. And did I say, did I actually say, and a few six-sided dice? Yes, I did indicate six-sided dice up here. And compare it to a target number, a TN. TN for problem area, TN for problem area checks. are always six. TNs for clout skills are always five. If the die equals or exceeds the TN, the action was successful. The action is successful, we'll say. However, players may improve their character's chance of success in two ways. One, roll an additional die for every one point of confidence spent. You may spend as many confidence points as you would like up to the number you have saved, but once spent, they are gone and you will have to earn more. Lynn says, I think clout calls for a hideous little statue with non-Euclidean dimensions in, to place in front of the player who has it. Well, you know, okay, this is one of the things that I was going on here that I was trying, I'm trying to not do this campaign 
by going to overseas manufacturing. I'm trying to not do that. Uh, that I, I'll we'll have to do that for the like the next campaign or something like that. So we'll, we'll we're going in that direction. But I kind of want to do this campaign without having to go to overseas manufacturing because I think you're completely right that we need some type of statue or something like that. And I already have that sculpted. Uh, oh, Mike, Micah, you like the cover? Very cool. I, I'm a big fan of the cover. I think it'll also stand out like it was on a shelf or something like that for some reason at, every time, at any time. Um, but I've got uh, sculpted the statue of the Cthulhu idol that is used in the show. So I've got, in fact, hold on. Have I got that over here? Where is my, uh, I, generally I keep that over here in the kitchen. Let me show you. This, this is the actual Cthulhu idol that was used in the show. This is Ben's Cthulhu idol. Let me solo myself. There we go. This is Ben's Cthulhu idol. This is just sculpted out of foam. And it's actually sculpted by uh, Carol, the, the same woman who made the uh, logos, the Cultist Coffee logos. So she actually was in, or she worked in the props department too for season one. And she sculpted this as Ben's janky Cthulhu idol. And I had this 3D sculpted. So there is a 3D sculpt of this. And I think this needs to be replicated as a um, foam, you know, like the stress relief balls that you squeeze. I think this um, would be perfect for, uh, for like a, a, a soft, squishy, janky Cthulhu idol from the cultists. But that'll have to come from overseas. So that'll have to come later. But yes, later, this would be perfect to use for clout. Uh, so yeah, we I, I I want to, but it won't be won't be here, won't be for this one. But this this just has to get out in the world. This just has to get out in the world. Uh, let's see here. How do the additional dice work? Do you add the result? Do you succeed if at least one of them, that one of them exceeds the TN? That's okay. Let's make sure we're specifying that. Let's add the sentence right there, Lynn. All right. Cause I don't think that's clear. Uh, say once, but once they're gone, you have to earn more as long as if at least one die one die equals or exceeds the TN of the check, the action is successful. Or actually, let's put this, let's put this sentence down below here. Because we say, roll an additional die for every one point of confidence. That should be just spent. You may spend as many confidence points as you would like. Do I need to say comp you may spend as many confidence points as you would like up to a number you've saved, but once spent, they are gone and you will have to earn more. The, uh, two, the player with clout always rolls an additional die on any check they make. If you succeed at a problem area check, so before we go there, we need a sentence here to say, anytime you're rolling multiple dice, rolling multiple dice on a check, or when you are rolling, When you roll, or when you roll, yeah, when you roll multiple dice on a check, if at least one die equals or exceeds the TN of the check, the action is successful. So there we go. If you succeed, and the, we can, this is because this is more stuff about success right here. If you succeed at a problem area check, your character, uh, your character successfully accomplishes the action that no one expected them to do, and the character gains two confidence points. If you succeed at a clout skill check, your character gains clout among the cultists. The character who previously had clout, you receive clout, uh, your character gains clout, the character who previously had clout loses it. If you fail, you must introduce a complication into the game. 
So that indicates what is successful, what makes you successful, uh, and then uh, what the consequences of success and failure are. Actually, this is not potting foam. Uh, she layered this. This is um, this is just um, pink insulation foam, but she glued it into a block and then carved it from that. So it's 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 not uh, it's not mashable like the potting foam. So it's actually uh, uh, much firmer than that, which is good because props props get beat up during a show. No, oh, it could be a good dice tower. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, if you succeed, if you succeed, thank you. At a problem area check. Thank you. Okay, complications. Complications. A complication is a new wrinkle, setback, or obstacle that makes the story more difficult for your characters or even all the cultists as a group. Players are free to introduce complications into the game at any time, but are required to do so whenever a check is failed. We've been capitalizing check. The nature of such a complication is up to the player, though they are welcome to ask the other players for suggestions. Up to the player. Uh, imagination is the only limit to the kind of complication in introduced, but it's generally better for the complications to start small and become bigger and more significant as the game progresses. Confessional. All right, confessionals. A confessional is a scene where your character breaks the fourth wall and speaks to an imagined audience about what is going on in the story. Occasionally, a confessional may also take the form of a character's inner monologue or a soliloquy as, characters re as uh, a character reveals his or her inner thoughts out loud. During a confessional, your character reveals something previously unknown, foreshadows something, or pokes fun at a character, even themselves. Confessionals are intended to introduce unexpected things into the story that you and the other players must incorporate. Uh, must incorporate. I'm going to say into the story again. At any point during a scene, you're, at any point during a scene your character is in, you can interrupt the scene and cut to a confessional for your character. Mark one of the three confessional types on your character sheet and make your confession. One, if the confession hinders or harms your character, des describe how they fail at something or otherwise suffer. The confessional character then gains two confidence points. If the confession hinders or harms another character, introduce a complication for them into the scene. The confessional character then gains one confidence point. Once the confession is played out, that should be, is that the confessional? I think that's the confessional. Once the confessional is played out, return to the scene being played and continue the game. A player may only play out one of each type of confessional once during a single game. Uh, a player may only play out one of each type of confessional. Do I need once there? Once during a single game. Uh, a player may only play out one of each type of confessional during a single game. I don't think I need this once right here. Because that kind of because you can do it three times. A player may only play out one of each type of confessional during a single game. It is even possible for players not to be able to play out all three if there are a lot of players or if the story ends up being relatively short. You might want to have it some tables to roll on for complications. I think that's a great idea too, because I like that kind of thing. Because we've talked about that, and this is intentionally the the low stakes rule system is intentionally very um, improv kind of uh, improv uh, improv heavy. But let's say um, table of complications, because I think that's a good idea. We're going to make a note here. Um, For inspiration on different, uh, <laughs> for inspiration on possible complications, 
see the uh, appendix, whatever. I'll put that in later because I, I, I would like to have that too. Okay, and then that ends goes to wrapping up the story. Wrapping up the story. Eventually, the game. This makes more sense, as I think, as far as our structure of our rules and the flow of the rules. Eventually, the game will come to a point where it feels like the overall story arc is close to being resolved, and the story is coming to a close. At this time, the player with clout can declare they are attempting to bring the story to a close. If they do so, another player can attempt to take clout away from them before the scene ends. That player makes a clout skill check as normal, spending confidence if they have any. The player who is cur who currently has clout can spend their confidence as well, but each point they spend cancels one point of confidence spent by the by the player trying to win clout. Though the player rolling the clout check can never roll less than one die. Once this final check is made, the story moves to its final resolution. The player should guide the story to a conclusion where things work out well for the character with clout and all those who succeeded at a problem area check during the game. The players may describe how things end on a positive and uplifting note for them. Things end poorly for the other characters. The players should describe how things end with embarrassment, failure, or otherwise some down note for their character. And that's basically the rules. So now, creating a character. So here's what we've got here. Let me take it, get a sip here. Ah, thrown out by the spouse needs to be on there too. Yes, things that can happen to cultists. The, the spouse has had enough. Which is the opposite of Steve's situation. Leaving the spouse. Uh, character creation. Every player will need a character to play. Players are free to choose any of the pre-generated characters in the back of this book, which include many of the characters in the Cultist web series. However, players may also create their own character to play using the following steps. One, select a narrative role. So I thought this was a unique kind of thing for that uh, the low stakes rules kind of introduced. Because you, you want to go right to, like in their case, I want to play a vampire. I want to play a werewolf. Here, you want to go right to, I want to play a, you know, a witch of Azathoth or a, you know, a cultist of Yogg-Sothoth. But they make you stop by narrative role first. And I think this is a good idea because this defines basically how your character is going to interact with other people. And you can put your cult on top of that. So one, select a narrative role. In the cultist RPG, the most important thing about a character is the narrative role they play in the group and in the story. Narrative roles include anachronism, grump, uh, instigator, or rebel. Generally, groups should only include one character of a particular narrative role. This gives each player a definable niche to fill when creating the story. Narrative roles in the cultist RPG include, and we're going to list them all right here. Players can jot down the notes, uh, notes about their character on a sheet of paper or print or photocopy the blank narrative role sheet in the back of the book. I don't think I need to say that because I already said, I noticed in the beginning about giving each player a copy of a character sheet. So I'm taking that out. Two, select your cult. Although perhaps the most interesting thing about playing in the cultist RPG is being a member of one of the many uh, about... Uh, I don't think I need in there. About playing the cultist RPG is being a member of one of the many Lovecraftian cults. Oh, uh, okay, I think I changed up that sentence too. So perhaps one of the cults. From there, so yeah, as I brought these out. Um, players are free to combine their narrative role with membership in whatever cult they want. Cult they choose. This also allows this, this right here. Players may all choose to be part of the same cult or might choose to be from a variety of different cults like in the cultist web series. So you can, nobody, nobody shut out from being one type of cultist just because somebody else takes it. The players are free to decide. Three, define your character's powers. So this is what we're going to come up with. BGD was talking about different powers for different cults and such. Each cult has a special power. Uh, each cult has a special power. 
The section on cults in the back of this book has a variety of different recommended powers. Alternative players can define what special power their character has when it comes up during play. Four, select three problem areas. Each narrative role has a variety of possible problem areas. Players should choose three of these and indicate them on their character sheet. Players are also free to come up with their own problem area and write it on the blank line on their character sheet. Five, select three clout skills. Clout skills are things the character is particularly good at and may allow them to get an edge over their other cultists, uh, to get an edge over, uh, an edge on, to get the edge on, get the edge on their other cultists, the other cultists, and perhaps gain the upper hand uh, to gain an edge, to gain an edge. And perhaps gain the upper hand over the other cultists. That makes more sense. Clout skills are things the character, the character, I should just be characters, I'm designing a character. Clout skills are things the character are particularly good at and may allow them to get an edge and may allow them to. Yeah, let's just do that. The sentence giving a prompt. To gain the upper hand over other cultists. Clout skills are things the character is particularly good at and may allow them to gain an upper hand over the other cultists. Possible clout skills are determined by the character's narrative role. Players should select three of the possible clout skills and indicate them on their character sheet. Players are also free to create their own clout skill and list it on the blank line. But if a player chooses to create their own, he or she should be sure the skill is not too narrow. It should be broadly applicable so it can be used in a variety of situations. Edge over. Oh, mini love. Oh, wait, wait, where was that? Oh, ch chased off by another cult. Out of donuts, out of coffee. I like that too. Uh, oh, right here. Mini Lovecraftian. Yep, or cults. That's supposed to be right there. Got it. Thank you, Lynn. Elder entities respect, respect do not. <laughs> okay. Grammaring. Uh, dice. I hadn't, I had not thought about this being a dice tower. I had thought of it being the squishy, uh, you know, it's a, a squishy, but uh, it would have to be cast to be a dice tower. Huh. And it would probably also be something that has to be an overseas, manu overseas manufacturing thing. But dice tower, I would not have thought of that idea. So thank you guys. Um, indicate, uh, the character has one confidence point. This can be done by taking a token. The players are using to indicate confidence or by marking it down on the character sheet. Seven, give your character a name. Eight, define any other relevant details. The player may define anything else they feel is important about their character, including their appearance, how they dress or how they speak and act quirks they might have, etc. Okay. So now we get into the narrative roles here. So this is basically the character sheet and what you've got. And again, I was surprised at how many of the different cultists and characters in the cultists I saw in what Craig had already put together with the low stakes RPG. So I thought that was fascinating. So what we need to do is look at these and then we've got these pre-generated characters. Um, That's okay. Playing the game with the GM, that's an appendix, but we got, okay. So we got the pre-generated characters right here. So I put together, this is quite a list. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What is the sister's name? 
Why can't I remember this? Look, I've got the Cultist Season 1 screenplay. Oh, so by the way, I've got the screenplay here. I'm going to put these on the uh, RPG, uh, on the Kickstarter, RPG Kickstarter as well. I think I've shown these before, but if you're here new, and especially if you're on the Cultist channel, Brianna and I put together the screenplay, and we got them put into a book right here. So this is the Season 1 and Season 2 screenplay. Right here, season one, season two. So these are also going to be on that, that Kickstarter for the RPG. You'll be able to get the screenplay here. So I like seeing them over on my shelf. They're, the only, the only I got to get a new um, proof of them because we didn't put anything on the spine, and I'm not sure why. So uh, we revised the covers that we will have, you know, the Cultist season one on the spine here. So these will be on the Kickstarter page when those come up. Um, Bella, Bella, that's right, Bella. Don't know why I couldn't remember that. So Bella needs to be on here because we need we need some way for you to play a, a, a normie. Maybe we should call it like a normie. Because uh, Bella is clearly an instigator. So, but so we've got okay. I've got Acantha, obviously. Bella, that's the sister. Bloop. Bloop is a. Uh, guy, how much do I want to say about Bloop right now? What can I say? Bloop, Bloop is a guy who would be introduced in season three, and Bloop is a uh, deep one. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. So we, we we have a character who's who's kind of deep one like right here. Uh, bratty siblings, yep, yep. Bratty siblings, siblings. Bratty siblings interrupt. Yeah, it could be any type of S siblings messing something up for you. I like that. An Austinable deep one. Right, yes. <laughs> Bloop is an Austinable deep one. Right, yes. I hope we get to do season 3. We we need we need the campaigns to go to go big in order to be able to afford to do season 3. Cuz The Cultist is not a cheap show to make. The Cultist is is not, I mean even though it is just a web show and stuff like that. It's still not cheap because, you know, everybody's paid who comes out. And when you're talking about, you know, when you look at the number of people who are, you know, it's an ensemble cast. And if you're looking at the number of people who are in a particular scene, OK, that's all of those actors and actresses are being paid. You've got the director on set. You've got the director of photography on set. And one thing we are definitely going to do uh, if we get to do season three, because we want to we want to step up the production value of season three even more. You know, we, we really want to. I, I don't really plan on doing more live action shows. I, I've come to, I, I don't really feel the need to do that. Uh, Cause I think I'm going to be able to do other things, other shows through animation and such. So I don't really feel like I need to be able to do um, another, another live action show. So if I get to do season three, I want it to be top notch. Use all the lessons that we've learned from season. You know, we learned all the lessons from season one. We did season two even better. I want to learn all the lessons, take all the lessons from season two and do season three and do season three even better. And one of the, the expenses of season three that we're going to have is I want to hire a dedicated audio person. We have a dedicated sound person on set. Uh, Brennan, the director of photography, has a lot more contacts now. Uh, he, will, he would still be running the camera but I really want to have a dedicated sound person on set and that's going to be expensive. So we got to do this. Well, we got to do this. Well, right. Yep. Yeah, uh, some locations need uh, payment, you know, right. They get, so, you know, you've got behind the scenes person, at least another, another person behind the scenes, the editor, the data wrangler, uh, the craft services, right. Yeah. Getting lunch for everybody in cra craft services. The production manager ran that as well as getting lunch there for everything like that. Yeah, so even when you're talking about low budget, it can get up there. Some locations do need payment. We had to we rented the house, you know, Mike's house, we we rent because that's an Airbnb, so we rent that. So yeah, it would be so awesome to be able to cuz Brian and I have basically already written season 3 as well. Season 3 is written. It's probably about 85% of the way there. Now Brian and I haven't looked at it in a while. Uh so based on all of the the study of story that we've done, we could uh, we're, I'm sure we would revise the season three scripts. And I know there were two, I know there were two scenes that were not finished for season three that were on me to write. Um, 
it would be really nice for that to, to see the light of day and be done really well and be kind of um you know kind of, kind of like make a statement about what what we can actually make what we were actually able to come together and make so bloop bloop is that carry austinable deep one yes carry dad dave evander now evander was a character who got dropped from the the show um Evander is a warlock of Azathoth. There are originally three, you know, Sh uh, um, um, Acantha and Shay. There are originally three of them, but, you know, uh, when we were writing it out, and Evander was a warlock of Azathoth. But we didn't need a warlock of Azathoth, and we ended up dropping that character. But I thought that Evander could uh, be brought back in here. So Evander is a warlock of Azathoth. We got Mike, Rob, Shay, Sherry, Steve, and Mom. And there was also a whole cult that uh, got dropped. And I'm going to go look up their names from the, the early drafts of season one, because the, we had cultists of cultist um, of Nodens. There were two cultists of Nodens who were like rangers who lived in the backyard. <laughs> um, so I kind of want to bring them back. So that this is one, two, three, let's see, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's fit. Okay, that's fifteen. That's a lot. So that's fifteen characters. We need to assign the first thing we need to do is we need to assign each one of these characters a narrative role because that basically defines. That's kind of like their class that determines what they are and then what their particular problem areas are, which can be custom. Okay, so for instance, the anachronism. You are better suited to living in another time and so are out of place in the modern world. You are set in your ways and have a touch and have a tough, uh, that should be tough time, time dealing with the speed and complexity of modern life. That to me, well, uh, so, okay, actually, well, I won't say anything. I'll let you guys say something. Hey, uh, Mun Druid, good morning, good morning. Good to see you in the chat. He says, uh, good morning. Uh, glad to finally catch you live. What are we talking about? We're designing an RPG for my web series, The Cultists. So The Cultist is on its own channel, and we are trying to put together an RPG. Yep, I'm trying to make an RPG adaption of the show. Yep. Oh, hey, uh, PH, good morning, good morning. Well, glad to have you here. Okay, so... so I'm not going to say which character I think goes with which. I, you guys can call that out in the 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 comments, and that way we'd see what see how this goes. That rather than my saying what I think. So the anachronism. This is one from low stakes. So problem areas. So okay, we're going to end up with a cult list on here. So um, let's see what cults do we have here? That was uh, Normy and Nodens. So I think these will be our cults. And each one of them needs to have a special power, and you'll check which cult you're for. I've got Normie written down here just because I think you should be able to create a character who is not in a cult and playing one like like the pre-generated characters. If you want to play mom or the sister or something like that, or dad, uh, I think you should be able to play a Normie, possibly a reformed cultist. You know, this could be um, could have options options to check for being a reformed cultist, kind of like dad. But Azathoth, Cthulhu, Dagon's, no, dang it, Dagon, dang it, dang it, Dagon, Nodens, Normie, Shub, and Yog uh, sothoth That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different cult choices. I think it's pretty good. So this list of cults will come up with powers for each one. Um, and I want to put like a blurb here, three or four sentences on each cult and then what its main power is. And then you can come up with other powers and like main power and suggested powers. We're going to need, uh, we need, uh, oh, and suggested powers. So need uh, main power and suggested powers for each one. I also think actually come to think of other things to write. Um, we talked about playing a game with the GN. I kind of would like to add a note in here about uh, magic in the cultist RPG and write a little bit about at least how we thought about magic when we were writing the scripts and different ways that you could take magic in the game. Uh, so I, I'll put that down here as another note here. So, uh,
Oh, okay. So here is a good question. So Micah says, what I consider perhaps has to or the unspeakable. Well, okay. Now, how do we want to handle, uh, how do we handle, oh, you know, well, Steve, Steve worships um, Narlathotep. So we do need Narlathotep. I can't believe I, I forgot about that one. That's mine. That's probably not how you spell Narlathotep. Nyarlathotep. There we go. So Nyarlathotep needs to go in here. This is oh, this is a lot. Maybe we end up having to drop Nodens because Nodens was from the from the is being brought back from cut material, but there may be too much. Uh, Nodens, but uh, as a draft list, this is fine. Now, how do we want to deal with the Yellow King? Now, we didn't say Hastur here. Um, How do we want to handle the Yellow King? Because in the in the show, you never see cultists of the Yellow King. They might be there, or they might not be. <laughs> you know that that would not be. Uh, uh, you're never actually you never actually see a cultist of the Yellow King. So maybe they're being pursued. Maybe they're not. Would you allow a player to be a cultist of the Yellow King? Or should they always be the antagonists? You know, in the um, in an early draft of the show, there were cultists of the Yellow King in there. And I, I remember what they were like. And actually, you know, I had talked about with Brianna, like if once we get, if we ever got season three done, then what we should do is then go back and write a movie script. Like here is here would be the cultists if it were a movie. <laughs> that way we would have it when we, when we go out to L.A. If we if I get to go out to L.A., she's going. She's having a lot more success than I am, but I think it would be funny, uh, and that we could revive some of the ideas. Like I remember what the cultists of the Yellow King were like, uh, and they were, um, well, the antithesis of our guys. Tomocrat says, I think the Yellow King could be the Yellow King could be like the MIB. Yeah, they could be. That's an interesting idea, though I'd imagine that to be more like Templars or Masons. Oh, yeah, that are like the MIB of the world. Uh, so we need to think about that. Do do player will players want to be the there's an argument, I think, both ways. Or we could even put in there that the how do you, ha you know, we could write in here, how do you handle the cult of the Yellow King? Uh, are they the, you know, they're the bad guys in, in this. So that that does give you an antagonist. It might be good to give you some kind of antagonist. And the, yellow, the cult of the Yellow King is always interfering. So this list right here. So for instance, like the anachronism. This cult list will go right here with a little power, a blur, you know, a line or a four, a, two or three words or whatever on its power, and you click what cult you belong to. So if you were the anachronism, you would click what cult you belong to, and then your problem areas, this is according to the low stakes, is modern tech and conveniences, social norms, pop culture. What is another possible problem area? I need another one. Uh for a possible problem area if you are playing the anachronism. And then, of course, you'll have a blank line here, too, where if you want to fill out your own problem area, you can. not But I need another problem area for the anachronism. And then your clout skills, which you're supposed to choose three of. So choose three. I need to make sure I put choose three here because I'll, I'll give this to Brianna to lay out. Possession of forbidden eldritch knowledge point out your past successes to others, pretend to be more important than you are, use outdated language and skills to impress. So you choose three there. Did I put all of these? Uh, clout skills, I need to be sure that it specifically says choose three on all of these.
who would be the is he true believer? See, not all. See, not all of these are from. I I thought we might need to add some. So if we need to add some, we can add some. Uh, let's see. Lynn says you could cut your budget greatly by just filming trailer scenes and a mock blooper reel. Who needs the whole movie to have fun? <laughs> Well, yeah. Anon says, Yellow King cultists want to produce a YouTube series called The Cultists in Yellow, and they're sharing their screenplay. <laughs> it's like the, uh, a meta a meta um, series. <laughs> uh, James says, You could convert the rules of Werewolf Secret Hitler to retirement uh, under the yellow brand. The cult of the Yellow King could be the... Fa well, we have that. No, we, we have we have that. That that's after the RPG. If this goes well, see, in order to do the board game, we're gonna have to go to overseas manufacturing. And we need a lot more energy and a lot more power uh to be able to get that done. So we need a lot more energy because we need a lot more people. So we've got to promote it to turn um to create the cultists um to create the cultists social deduction game. Because right, when I was playing Secret Hitler, I was like, oh, this needs to be the cultists, right. So that needs to happen, but that would involve overseas manufacturing. We need a lot more people to know about what we're doing, and we need a lot more people to know about the cultists. So if we're able to do the RPG, that's why I'm not going to overseas manufacturing for the RPG. And then um, after that, if that works well, and we have enough people to get together for a crowdfunding campaign to actually do a minimum run of a board game, then we will do uh, the board game, the social deduction game jobs uh problem areas holding down a job well that could be i uh, from holding down a job pop culture social norms holding down a job i like that one or authority like uh, you have a problem with authority or 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 have someone who is the authority in here Hello, Zonalar. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you. And welcome to anybody who is watching on the cultists side of things. Ordinarily, this live stream is done on the Heath's Geekverse. So we are um, li dual live streaming today on both the Heath's Geekverse channel. But since we're talking about the cultists, I decided to dual live stream on the cultist channel specifically. So if you're liking the show, you can come over to the Heath's Geekverse channel as well. If you're over on the cultist side of things. Uh, what is What is morale? I'm not sure what that influence was that talking about the uh, powered by the apocalypse influence. So, all right. So, and then you've got uh, the checks for your confessions as well. Um, reveal something unknown, foreshadow what's to come or poke fun at a character. And everybody's got those. Those are the three different confessions that you can do. Okay. The next type is the caregiver. You are often the character who, so who, who in the cultists, which of these, which of these do you think of the cultists, is the anachronism in the in our pre-generated characters here? Oh, oh, the pro the problem the morale. Okay, or the I was thinking the problem with authority is another problem area. PH says, "How about a cultist power that only work on the supernatural realm and nobody else can perceive or have no effect on the material world?" That way you keep the fun of people not understanding or believing them. Well, I think that can work. Uh, I mean, something like that can work because uh, maybe there are powers, actual magical powers. We were non-committal with the witches. We were non-committal with the witches. Okay, the caregiver. You are often the character who gets actual work done. Let's say the one. You are often the one who gets actual work done and looks after the other cultists. Because you are so involved with taking care of everyone else, you neglect your own hopes and dreams, sometimes to your own detriment. 
So problem areas will insult the insult will insult the cults. We'll insert the cults up here once we have them finalized. But your problem areas are take care of yourself, deal with a personal problem, stand up to someone, berate or punish someone. Your clout skills involve solve a problem for someone else, prove your value to someone, flatter someone in detail, and teach someone how to do something. And then you've got your confessions confessions as well. The grump. You are perpetually in a sour mood. Few things, if any, make you truly happy. You have a few endearing qualities that keep others from killing you, but you only use them to get your way. So the problem areas include give in on something, be friendly and inviting, apologize and mean it, and show genuine affection. Whereas the clout skills are, that should be stare, stare silently to win, complain until you get your way, show your good side and get your way, get someone else angry and bond with them. Anon likes the idea, PH's idea. That bit, uh, so magic is belief. Well, you know, and that that is present in the cultists as well. No, you like stare silently to win. <laughs> uh, the instigator. You take joy in poking others, getting them to do things for you, or otherwise manipulating them passively. You're often mildly off-putting and have a hard time developing close relationships. Be honest with your, your problem areas are be honest with someone, avoiding manipulating others, hand over your power, and just let it go. Clout skills include bore something, uh, bore someone into doing something, incite negative emotions in someone, control the room by constantly talking and ignore someone to force your point. And you choose, you choose three, of course. You choose three. The judge. Because you are so dedicated to your cult and God, you often see others not as li uh, others as not living up to your high standards, and you don't mind uh, calling them out over it. Uh, you don't believe others live up to your high standards. You are let's say let's just say you are extremely dedicated to your cult and God. You are extremely dedicated to your cult and God. Uh, and others often don't live up others start a new sentence others often don't live up to your high standards and you don't mind calling them out over it However, constantly examining the behavior of others around you makes you blind to your own shortcomings. Problem areas. Fix a problem you created, be kind and nurturing, take criticism well, or admit weakness. Clout skills are berate someone into doing what you want, point out someone's flaws in detail, trick someone into getting what you want, or convince someone to concede. I don't know about that one. Is there something better there that the judge would get? Mike is talking about magic, says it's present in a lot of tabletop RPG magic systems and also in a lot of in real life magic guides. Definitely a major thing of post-human powers in the uh, Chaperoverse. The Peacock. You are the cock of the world, and you assume everyone knows it. Your style, panache, and sexy eyes are the envy of everyone you know. You're sure there's nothing about you that needs work. Your problem areas are show humility, empathize with others, do anything low-key, and be helpful without reward. Clout skills include impress others with your style and panache, woo someone, uh, that should be overwhelm, overwhelm someone with your greatness, control the room. Think about Rome there. I was thinking about the Roman Empire for the day. Control the room non-verbally. So PH is saying, imagine three guys doing stances, hand movements, and shouting in the middle of the park. People just passing by are oblivious. They're actually closing a portal from a holy dimension to help their God. 
uh, their evil god uh, enter. We might have to have some portal opening and closing going on. The Rebel. You hate rules, period. You prefer to do things your way. Even when you go along with others' wishes, you put your own spin on things. You have a hard time getting others to trust you. Problem areas include cooperate with someone, see the error of your ways, get someone to trust you, show humility. Clout skills are show your way to be the best way, surprise everyone, make someone else feel cool, show off big time. Okay, I believe those are all of the ones that come from low stakes. But I kind of thought that there were some other ones that needed to be added in. Can we think of other um, uh, other uh, uh, narrative roles that seem to fit with the cultists? I think we can. So I had a, a possible, so possible other narrative roles include the true believer, uh, the half heart, or, or the conflicted, the conflicted. Like this is the person, like this, I was thinking I put the half heart over here, but I think I like the conflicted better. Like maybe something like you love the cult life. You really do. But there are other things you really like as well. Like your band. Girls. <laughs> um, or some other mundane interest. That draws your attention that that often draws your attention away from the elder gods in ways your friends disapprove of or ways other cultists I, what do you think about that? Uh, let's see. Oh, he, you must give some bonus for cultists who drink cultist coffee. Oh, we do need the coffee to be in there someplace. Of course, out of we talked about like a problem being out of coffee or something. Uh, could there be some kind of coffee? How, like, how can cultist coffee be involved here? bonus uh let's see oh anon says the larper they think it's all a joke and everyone is secretly in on it oh that's interesting uh yeah the larper it's like somebody who's um like somebody who's gone goth just because they think it's cool and a way to fit in the crowd, right? Let me make a note of this. Uh, that could be one. For, for lack of a better name at the moment, the LARPer. The, you're just into it because it's cool. So like the uh, so the the conflicted drugs, uh, your band, girls, drugs, beer. Or some other mundane interest. Yes. League bowling. Very distracting. Yes. <laughs> League bowling. Right. I thought that's what you were talking about. Right. When they're doing that in the park. Right. Yes. I, I like that conflicted role idea. I, I think so, too. I think that's a good one to have. The LARPer keeps trying to play rock, paper, scissors with everyone. Where does that come from? 
Lynn says it would be fun to have somebody who doesn't believe and has to find ways to explain everything they see. What's somebody who goes to uh, Ren fails, Ren fails, Ren? Yeah, this this is the person who just likes the aesthetic. So let's say, okay, the LARPer. Uh, uh, you aren't really. Uh, you, you don't really, uh, you're not really, uh, you're not, re um, aren't totally convinced of this worshiping elder gods thing, but hanging with the cultists. Hanging with cultists is really cool. And you seriously dig their aesthetic. And hey, they accept you. So why not? I don't know. We'll come up with something better. But that's, that's kind of where we're going, right? That's kind of where we're going with that. Oh, oh, rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, sister. Rock, paper, scissors is how LARPers do non-aggressive combat. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay, I got you. That needs to be like a clout skill or something like that. Win by playing rock, paper, scissors. Anon says, I could totally see the cultists start following the conflicted because they're just cooler than their god. Tomocrat says, I love the LARPer idea. I just want to be one now. <laughs> Uh, uh, I like that they accept you, or maybe they're just keeping you around in case they need to sacrifice someone. And hey, they accept you, so why not? Uh, they accept you, or or and hey, they accept you, so why not? Uh, on the other hand, they may just be keeping you around in case they need to sacrifice. Uh, okay, so the conflicted, uh, the outsider. So uh, here I was thinking of um, well, I was specifically thinking here of uh, Carrie and Sherry. Because you know they live, they live in the you know the other, like the other area. They they you know the, the other world. You have to go into the woods, which is like the the other area in the cultists. You know you have to go into the other world. So these people are have largely left the modern world to fully embrace the cult life. Uh, the woods. Uh, your hangouts, your hangouts, your hangout uh, is even considered Oh, you know, Steve had that for a while. Uh considered too, uh, might even be considered too hardcore by other cultists. I don't know what to say here. But I, I was thinking about, yeah, somebody who has just completely left the modern world and is operating on the outside of it completely. In Eric the Viking, there's a Catholic priest who does not believe in the North Pantheon. He does not see the halls of Valhalla when they reach it. Thus, he does not get what's happening. Oh, the sacrifice would be a great archetype of its own. Uh, 
Tom Cruise. You can see this is a Munchkin card game now. God, it's been so long since I've seen played Munchkin. That's uh, that. That's pretty cool. So, okay, the outsider, and then I, I was thinking the lackey. I, I have, I have, uh, I was having some other idea about the lackey. Uh, you know, but but they accept you. I'm using the word accept again, so I don't know about that. We'll have to come up with something. But but they accept you. And you have nothing else. Uh, you're often the labor. And don't get no respect. <laughs> but they accept you and you have nothing else. Something like that. Uh, oh, like, okay, I need an E, thanks. Thank you. Cultist Munchkin has real possibilities. Well, maybe that's one of the, maybe we need to reach out to, uh, maybe we need to reach out to Steve Jackson. <laughs> maybe after season two is out. Maybe, you know, what do you do with the cultists after that? Maybe, maybe the cultist mus Munchkin. That'd be funny. Everybody would have to, you know, write in, tell them it has to happen. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that. Uh, okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's, okay, I think it's 12. That's plenty. And unless somebody can think of another one, somebody had mentioned the sacrifice. Uh I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like, uh, would we have like clout skills and stuff for that? Um, but anyway, okay. So that, but that's twelve. That's quite a bit. Oh, the true. I, oh, I did have the true believer in here too. But I'm wondering if that's too much like the judge. So the judge is you're extremely dedicated to your cult and God. But on the other hand, you could have I think a different kind of um, uh, archetype here that that the judge. Extremely dedicated to your cult and God. Others don't live up to your high standards. Whereas this guy is just like the fanatic. Not so much into... And this is just notes here. The judging of others. But just completely... invested in the love of the elder gods and bringing them to earth completely into it well wh <coughs> what about um yeah the follower or the, it could be it could be follower too it could be follower yeah but i think those would be kind of together uh the the cult mom that is uh the caregiver you're the one who gets actual work done and looks after the cultists. Okay. So, all right. So if we've got these 12, then we got pre we need to assign each one of these a different role here. Now, Acantha, see, Acantha strikes me as the anachronism. But she could also be the caregiver. She does take care of them a lot. But I think when I first think of her, I think of the anachronism. Okay, Bella, this she needs to be the instigator. All right, let's read instigator, right? You take joy in poking others, getting them to do things for you or otherwise manipulating them passively. That kind of sounds like Bella. You're awfully mild off-putting and have a hard time developing close relationships. I kind of think... Um, you know, if you, 
like if you gave her problem areas, avoid manipulating others, hand over your power and just let it go. You would have Bella. Um, she, her clout skills would definitely be like incite negative emotions uh, in someone, ignore someone to force your point. Um, and then maybe come up with something else that's like her, you know, you know, like active antagonism or something like that. I mean, it could be control the room by constantly talking. But I don't think she necessarily does that. But I think it's like something about like a scheme, scheming active antagonism. Let me make a note of that. Like scheming, schemes and active antagonism. Uh, bloop. Okay, so this would be the lackey or the follower. Okay, carry. The outsider. But that might be Shay as well. We got to think about Shay. Uh, dad. This is Normie. No, that's the cult. Uh, that his cult would be Normie. So what would his role be? Hmm, I'm not sure. And I'm not, what about, so So Rob is the one that I'm thinking of as the conflicted. No, no, not Rob, excuse me. Dave. Dave is the conflicted one because he's got the band going on. PH says, Heath, you should check out Eric the Viking. It's here on YouTube, the full movie. It has Tim Robbins, John Cleese, and Terry Jones, and My Mickey Rooney on the cast. I have heard of that. And I think I've been told that before. Okay. Note made. Thank you, PH. Uh, so Dave is the conflicted. I don't know what Mike is. So Mike is like, uh, on set, they would refer to him as the Gryffindor. Mike is the Gryffindor. If it's written correctly, it could be true believer. I was thinking about that being more fanatical like, but I bet you could you could base Mike out of the true, you know, base Mike on something like the true believer archetype. Now see Rob, see Rob could be true believer. But I see I see different things for Rob. And in fact, I think it's kind of interesting that you could play the same character in different roles. Because if written right, Rob could definitely be the true believer. Especially in season two, Rob is definitely a true believer. But really, I think of him, like, he comes off to me as first the judge. No one is living up to his standards, right? So Rob would be built off of the judge. But sometimes he's rather grumpy. <laughs> sometimes we have grumpy Rob. So sometimes Rob could play the role of the grump, I think. Uh, Shay, what is Shay? Now, see, Shay could be the caregiver, e even though she's. See, what is, what is Shay? You know, she's so sarca uh, sarcastic, um, and you know, she's got this love hate relationship with the guys. Hey, if you're coming in, let me let me. Uh, 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 if people are coming in, let me be sure to bring this up. If you have not, if you want to be part of this, I put together this five people coming in, this $500 dice giveaway, Elder Dice. I put together a $500 dice giveaway. Grand prize is $300. There are other prizes as well to relaunch the cultists and this RPG. So uh, Elder Dice, $500 giveaway. If you want to be on the list for when this RPG comes to Kickstarter, we got shirts and things like that. Oh, I can scroll down. So we're going to have the, the giving away the dice. We've got such a great cover for the RPG that was done by Adam Botsford. And then we're going to have these shirts as well. So I'm going back to the shirts because they're so fantastic. 
uh, especially the shirts that here, the, the cultist coffee shirt and the witch's brew shirt, which I absolutely love, which are, you know, spoofs of the Starbucks logo, but then also the thank you, mama shove shirt and the, you can't summon Cthulhu with sour cream and onion and the hail uh, black go to the woods with a thousand young. I'm going to put these shirts on the same Kickstarter as the, um, as the cultists RPG. And I'm not exactly sure when this is happening, but it's going to happen fairly soon. I started building out the page and things like that. But we'll give away, I'll give away $500 worth of dice uh, the day the uh, Kickstarter campaign goes live. So if you want to be in on that and you want to be on the mailing list for what the cultist RPG and what's happening with the cultist relaunch and all of that, please hit that link and come over here if you are here and joining us. And thank you for to everybody who's on the Geek, Heath's Geekverse channel and the cultist channel this morning since we're dual streaming. But that's the that's the place to be if you want to know what's going on with all these. But yes, uh, Anand says people can play by multiple archetypes. And I think that's a really neat part of this. And in fact, I think we should probably note that uh, someplace in the rules. Let me make note of that. That, hey... Um, Because I actually I think we 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 need to some, say something about um, like playing a, a campaign, which is just linking together episodes. But see, see, you know, link. We need some notes about linking together episodes. If you want to come back and play the same characters, linking together episodes, sessions like episodes into a season. Uh, but you can play the same character. We need to, I think this would be a good place to put it. You can play the same character, but with a different negative role, uh, narrative role, but with a different narrative role. And we can use examples like I was just talking about right there. For instance, Rob, uh, Rob arguably fulfills multiple uh, or, or plays multiple different multiple different narrative roles during the cultists season uh, the grump the judge, and the true believer. Feel free, to, uh, but uh, but often only one. Is, but it's true. But often, a single episode focuses on one role. On only one of these roles. Feel free. to keep the same character in a future session, but uh, swap up or switch up which narrative role they will be playing based on the circumstances and the situation of the story. And changing and changing situations in the story. Because it's often the change in situation that causes the character to become different and occupy some kind of different role. You know, what makes what makes him uh you know go from the grump to the judge to the true believer and things like that. That's changing circumstances in the story and changing uh changing circumstances and changing situations in the story. I could write all that, but I think that kind of stuff is an important note because I think it's kind of a neat thing here. No, the 13th archetype should be actual elder God just hanging out. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so maybe, right, exactly. So that maybe you start off as the LARPer, but then by the session two or session three, now you're the true believer. Right, yes, exactly, yes. James says there should be 13 roles. For the sake of superstition, it seems appropriate. And an elder God just hanging out with with is packed with humor potential. Uh, uh. Let's see. That that's funny.
the elder god just hanging out. The third this is so this would be the 13th narrative role. Uh, an elder god. Yeah, so the I like I like the idea. I like because I like any anyway in RPGs the idea of change because this doesn't seem like it's appropriate for leveling up. Like here's your class and then you're leveling up. It just doesn't seem like that style of game. But character change. I'm big on, you know, how do we facilitate character change? Sometimes that's improvement. That could also be some kind of degradation in some situations. So I like the mechanics that, that, that deal with character change. Right. And so this would be some kind of a mechanic that allows for character change. So we uh, can put down here. Um, uh, playing pregen, playing a campaign. This, this is dealing with character change. I'm just making note of that. Uh, okay. James says, yes, transitioning between roles will make eschewing a leveling system much smoother and way more fun. Because it just, like, in a game like this, you're not going to be giving out experience points or something like that anyway. I did open a place in the Discord server here. I'll also hand out the Discord server link for people who are here. Because I also put a link in the Discord server, or a new channel in the Discord server under the cultists. we got a place to just talk about the cultists. we got a specific channel now for talking about the cultists RPG. So if you've got, if you have additional thoughts on this, and I'll, I'll probably uh, put some ideas in there as I'm, as I'm working here. The Ravenkeep Discord, I'll put the link here so you can come in. And if you have additional ideas, we can talk about it definitely in the cultist RPG section of the Discord. Well, right. Lynn says, traditionally, character change in the Cthulhu mythos is descent into gibbering madness, but that doesn't fit the tone here. Right. Well, you know, uh, in season two, Rob starts going insane, but it's because, I mean, he's had, he's, you know, afflicted by great trauma. So that's one of the reasons why he's changing. And starts to go a bit kooky. Or kookier. <laughs> uh, okay, so playing the game with the GM. Let's see here. Okay, so so we were trying to come up with pre-generated characters. So okay, so actually we don't have a narrative. Ro no, see, this is a problem. We don't have a narrative role for something like mom. Because they're the antagonists. Mom is one of the is the antagonist. See, I see dad. Uh, I feel like you should have a way to play like the reformed cults. It might not be appropriate for you to play mom. Uh, arguably, it's not. Evander. See, we don't know what Evander. We have very little information on a can uh, uh, Evander. He was written into a couple of different scenes. Oh, you know what he should be? No, he is. He would fit the peacock. I was like, we really don't have a peacock uh, in the cultist. But actually, we were kind of thinking that it was going to be a Vander. A Vander was going to be very a very well dressed kind of like nineteenth century guy. Uh, so he could he could hit peacock. No, see here the Carrie could be, I mean, like I said, they could be different things, but Carrie could be another kind of lackey with Shay being the outsider. I kind of like, oh, not Shay, Sherry. What is Shay? See, Steve could also be, uh, see, Steve, the anachronism, the caregiver, the grump, the instigator, the instigator, um, In some way, I don't, I don't think the way the instigator is written right here, that really fits Steve exactly. The rebel? Um, well, it could be the rebel. I mean, he's clearly a true believer. In fact, in fact, the true believer, I mean, he left his home. He left his home uh, 
you know, he left his wife in order to become a cultist. So Steve kind of sounds like the, the true believer. Do people have thoughts on whether or not you should be mom? What is Shay? I, I feel like there's an archetype that Shay is. And I'm just not able to call it out because I don't see, uh, I mean, it could be, it could be the rebel. It could be the rebel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, yeah, well, yes, so it could be rebel. I think she might be the rebel because, you know, she is like the goth type, like the goth among the cultists. So if I'm looking at this co problem areas, cooperate with someone. Yeah, that's kind of difficult for Shay. See the error of your ways. That's why Shay and um, and Rob often butt heads because neither one of them sees the error of their ways. Get someone to trust you or show humility. That kind of sounds like Shay. So uh, Shay can also show uh, your way to be the best way. That seems to work. Surprise everyone when she finally does come in and like, okay, I'm going to help these guys. So actually, I think Shay might be rebel. Let's see. Uh, and then I'll go over here to the, the comments here. Uh, Pre-generated characters, Shay. Let's let's go Shay with the rebel. I still don't know what to do with mom and dad. Are, is there anyone that is not? Uh, let's see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15 potentials. We probably don't need two Ranger Cults of Nodens. Uh, and we might drop that one completely. We might drop that one completely because that we might just not need it. We might not need it. Uh, and we might drop one. So if we just go with the classics, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, that's 13 right there. But we don't have, so if we're giving Acantha the anachronism, we need to give somebody else the caregiver. Let's see. Zero the Blade says, out of curiosity, what about someone who is a believer of a god outside the Lovecraft list? Well, are they a player character? Or all the player, I kind of was thinking that all the player characters would be on the uh, believer in one of the Lovecraftian gods. Okay, but yeah, okay. So, but Lynn says might make it work if you make it a comically obscure one like Epona or Snatra. I don't know either one of those. Steve King is maybe an elder god just hanging out. He does f up everything, yeah, but he's he's very mortal though. He screws uh, his wife's life up, and the cultists of all stripes really kind of dislike him. Yeah. Stable says, this is a very entertaining stream. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please do like if you haven't, and the one on the cultist channel, too. Yeah, and if you're here and you have not, if you haven't watched any of this, if you're wondering what this is and you haven't watched, well, all of these episodes are over on the cultists' YouTube channel. So uh, we're re-releasing all of the episodes over there, the Cultists YouTube channel. And Anon says, technically archetypes can change based on which characters they're interacting with. Right, yes, right, yes, absolutely. But that likely gets out of hand quickly, right. That That's too much for this system. Because you're right, different characters... Uh, they, they talk about the archetypes being masks, right? So you, you put on different masks, to, especially to interact with other characters and things like that. Yes. Uh, James says, I agree. This has been fantastic. And I actually love the practice of placing characters into categories. I'm glad everybody's having such a great time. Okay, so what do we do? Let's see if we can resolve this problem together. Uh, where'd my window go? Oh, right here. Um Okay, so I, I think we keep Acantha as the anachronism right here. And that means we need somebody else to be the caregiver. See, we've got two lackeys. We could remove Bloop because Bloop is um, someone who might come in in season three. 
especially if Carrie is going to take the lackey. Although I, I was thinking about the lackey specifically about Bloop, because it seems like for all of our pre-generated characters, we need to have one in each category. I would say probably Sans Elder God just hanging out, or or we. I, I don't think any of the existing cultists really work with that. Um, oh, see, we don't have a LARPer. Hmm. Well, you know, we could do an alternate, you know, like when I think of caregiver, I do think of Acantha. So, I mean, is that, would that be too weird to have, to actually have some of them represented twice? You know, because Acantha is the one who's making you muffins and things like that. We don't, so we have got anachronism caregiver. We don't have the grump. Maybe, maybe you don't have mom because mom is, maybe you don't give mom as a, as a character because that would be difficult to play mom. Cultists who hate or at least severely critical of the God they worship is peak fandom. LARPer introduced in season three, maybe a teensy rewrite to include one. Uh, I don't know about that. We're, we're, we've got, we've got a really good season three. We've got a really great season three. Oh, oh, I could do that. Mike says, make an example character when doing a character creation and make them a LARPer. Oh, I could do that. Uh, now, I think I think that's too weird to have the same character be and be here, because if you're passing out like, hey, everybody pick up, uh, pick up, um, uh, pick a pre-generated character. It seems a bit weird for two two people like, oh, I'll take this one, I'll take this one, and they both end up as the same character. So I actually don't think you can do that. We need to just pick one. One representation here. Uh, yeah, so the, the lackey, or so the LARPer might be the character creation example. Make the LARPer... A character creation example. So that anachronism that still gives us that still needs to put caregiver someplace. I guess this needs to be another witch of Azathal. I feel like I have so many of them, and yet they're not. I guess I've doubled up too much because I've got like the true believer in here. Because you're you're only supposed to also have one of each type of character class, typically, to one type of narrative role in the game. So if you're handing these things out, then you could end up with more than one lackey. So every so we need to have one character matched one to one, and we've got to have each one. Okay, let's remove Bloop. God, I really hate to remove Bloop. <laughs> uh, Lynn says, why couldn't the incognito elder god be considered a LARPer after a fashion? Uh, well, it, it, he could. He could. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what to do. I guess I'm going to have to think about this a bit more. So some of these I think would be easy to make. So each one of these is going to get, um, it needs uh, like a small, like a two sentence write up on the character. And then also, um, uh, you know, the character sheet. Then I can pass these to Brianna. I wonder what we're going to, I wonder if we're going to, how, how we're going to do this. I was planning on the interior of this book just being black and white. And I wasn't really planning on going and having new art. If there were art done for each one of these characters, man, that would, uh, that would take a lot. That would be a lot for what, for what this is. Having art done for every character would be a lot. Uh, so I'll have to think about that. Or if there's some way to make give them some kind of symbol or something like that. 
Okay, so anyway, let's just skip a little bit here. So playing a campaign, we've got... Uh, so, so we do want to put a note on playing a game with a GM in here. Uh, and a little bit of this. Notes on Magic and the Cultists. Make this uh, make this one of the appendixes. Appendix, appendix. Um, so actually, playing a campaign needs to go in how to play, like after wrapping up the story, wrapping up the story, and then uh, something about linking together uh, things into a campaign. That seems to flow pretty well, rather than making that another appendix. Uh, Magic and the Cultist, pre-generated characters, the Cultist Appendix. Oh, so, okay, so what are their powers? Let's talk about what their powers are. People are here, we can come up with this. Make it bloop, carry, bloop or carry. Uh, yeah, that, I guess that could be done. If you don't have uh, don't have a picture, it's not gonna. Hmm. Uh, okay, main power suggested for each one. Okay, so if we've got these cults, what is it that we want a character to be or player to be able to do with their character because they're in the cult? So let, let's take let me look over here at low stakes. So when I'm looking at low stakes, it doesn't really give a whole lot of information on the different powers. Um, character creation page 15. So it just says, for instance, your type in low stakes can be vampire, psychic vampire, werewolf, ghost, mystic, or human. And it just says in parentheses, vampire, feed, psychic vampire, feed, werewolf, transform, ghost, inhabit things, mystic, minor magic, human, pass for human. Because, okay, it says, all, all it says is vampire, your typical bloodsucker. That's on the character sheet, what's there. Vampire, your typical bloodsucker. Your character can have been made a vampire at any time. Psychic Vampire, a special type of vampire that draws life energy out of its victims psychically. Werewolf, your basic hirsute wolf monster. Ghost, you're dead, but good news. You can have it, uh, inhabit other people and objects to inhabit the world, to interact with the world. Mystic, you're more or less human, but can cast simple magic spells that make your life easier. Human, your greatest power is the ability to pass as human. Other, you can define another monster type and play that. Just check with the other players first. They know what you're playing. That's basically all you get. So we can be vague and, and open like that, or we can be we can add a little bit more detail. Right. Human pass for human. Right. I know. I, I, I don't understand that one completely. <laughs> it says human, your greatest power is the ability to pass as human. I guess implying that all these other people do not. It says it's follow, it says following the types of monster the types of monsters you can play. Note that if you play a monster, you always come across to humans as a little off. You can never quite pass as fully human. So that's you can never pass as fully human if you play a monster. I have not ever seen being being human. Uh, okay, well. So we need some type of power like that for each one of these. Um, and notes on magic. I am getting a little bit hungry here. So it might be it might be getting close to time to call it. In fact, we've been going we've been going for uh, two hours and forty five minutes. Yeah, we're approaching noon too. <laughs> and there are other things that have to be done. Um, well, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. So this is what's been going on. I've been working a lot on this, as you can tell. I've been working a lot of this over the past week. We basically made the call earlier this week, based on what was going on with the cultists, that um, we thought the RPG was a good way to go before we try to do some type of board game or something like that. And uh, I really hope that uh, if you're if, that we can get a lot of uh, a, a lot of eyeballs on this in a way that we can get them to the Kickstarter campaign and get the shirts and everything like that done too. 
uh, because I think the cultist needs a lot more eyeballs on it and deserves uh, a much greater fandom. <laughs> I think so. So who knows? It would be really awesome to be able to do a season three. And we kind of really have to do it soon if we're going to do it. Otherwise, you know, I I'm not sure who will even be available to do season three. Uh, so will this be ready to run by Ravencon? Uh, I hope, I hope I need to look at, uh, what we need to actually put. Once I get the character sheets, we'd have to put the character sheets up there. So I would hope that it would be done by then. James says, I'm a uh, pledge as soon as you toss it up. Well, we're going to get ready. We're going to, we're going to promote the dice giveaway and, uh, try to make this happen. Standard editing offers. Yeah, I will definitely send it by you. Thank you, James. So the cultists on YouTube. So here are the links you need. The cultists on YouTube. If you have not, hey, if this has piqued your interest and you have not watched it, the first seven episodes of season one are on the cultist YouTube channel right now. So go over there, check out the cultists, and then please do sign up. If you're interested, the best way to, so that I know how many people that we've got uh, who are interested is the dice giveaway. That's how I'm going to be judging, like, when should we run this campaign based, by how, based on how many people do we have on the dice giveaway. So if you are not signed up over there, sign up there because that way we know how much energy we've got going into the campaign. All right. Uh, I put the, I'll check out the discord server. I'm going to go eat. Then I'll check out what's going on with the discord server. Maybe we can stop the porn bots. Uh, but if you have thoughts or suggestions and things like this, please post it in the cultist RPG section of the discord server. I'll be checking there and I'll put some uh, notes in there. Once I come up with some ideas for powers and things like that. So and we'll so we'll return to the cultist RPG as well uh, on the morning grind uh, as we get it finished. All right. Oh th well, thank you. See if sign up that way I know I've got the energy. <laughs> that way I know I've got the energy. So if you're interested, yes, signing up is huge. All right, everybody. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you so much for being here. Let's let's make this great. Uh, everyone, please go forth, be creative, and be constructive, and grind on. Later, everybody. <laughs>